What do they think his end will look like? Will he be eaten by a dead man? Or killed by a criminal? Or maybe betrayed by a friend? Wrong. Girls will be to blame for his death. Gentle girls, long-legged, educated, playful, and which one of them? They ask who to choose, but unfortunately, only the children make the choice, and the adults want them all. Let his adventure begin. The action takes place during the apocalypse. A man sits near a tall building and looks at a crowd of zombies that are approaching him. He says, calmly lighting a cigarette, that he killed so many people, but found nothing and was surrounded by zombies. Finally, the end of this bad day has come. The main character smiled and said that they would see each other in hell and pulled the pin from the grenade. There was a huge explosion, and then a flashback time stream burst out of the tower. The system notified that the target was beginning to move to another dimension. The target would arrive ten minutes before the end of the world. The main character was lifted by a stream into the sky. He wondered in surprise what was happening, bringing him back in time. On the day the apocalypse began, people started running out of grocery stores at night, screaming, there's a thief, we need to run, let them call the police quickly. An overweight man threatened a saleswoman with a knife and demanded to take money out of the cash register. The girl obediently opened the drawer and handed him the bills, let him take everything. The robber said what a beautiful girl he was, he didn't think he would be so lucky, he smiled madly. The robber began to approach her, the girl fell to the floor and, pressing herself against the closet, asked what he was going to do. She grabbed the toy to protect herself, let him leave or she will call for help. The seller was scared. The man with a disgusting expression on his face said that the louder she screams, the more he likes it. The girl started screaming for help. The man tore her clothes and said that no one would help her. Then an explosion was heard behind him. He turned back questioningly. The main character stood at the entrance to the store. He thought that he had really returned in the last minutes before the end of the world. The system has started the countdown, only ten minutes left. He needs all the food, tobacco, alcohol, basic necessities. He has a spatial ring, just ask where the warehouse is, collect as many supplies as he can, and be able to drive everyone crazy in a post-apocalyptic world. The robber pulled out a knife and shouted at the young man to stop. Who is he trying to scare with his toy gun on his belt? The man grinned. The main character wants him to punch a few more extra holes in him. When suddenly a shot flew past the man's face, the young man was serious and told the robber to shut up. The man fell to his knees and began to ask for forgiveness, saying that he was wrong. The main character hit him on the back of the neck with the edge of his hand, and the man fell to the floor unconscious. The main character approached the amazed girl and asked where the warehouse was, let her answer now. The seller pointed towards the door. The young man thanked her and threw the pink hairpin into her hands, saying that it now belonged to her. The girl caught this and asked the guy to wait. She threw him the key to the warehouse and said that she was grateful to him for her salvation. The main character caught the key, thanking him in return. He said for the future, if she wants to survive, let her find him and he will fulfill any of her requests. The seller asked in amazement what he meant by the word survive. The main character opened the door to the warehouse. He thought that less than six minutes had passed. He needed to collect as many supplies as possible. The system notified that there was 5 minutes 56 seconds left. The main character activated his ring and collected all the boxes of supplies from the warehouse. When there was one second of time left, he said that the supplies had been collected and it was time to return. The main character disappeared in a stream of light. After the end, it was dark and gloomy in the city of Fallen Leaf. It was raining. Near one of the houses, several guys approached the girl, saying that she looked great. She needed to take a closer look. One of them said, play with it for a few days, and it will be possible to sell it and exchange the proceeds for some kind of food. The girl, with tears pressed against the wall, asked them not to come closer, she would scream now. One of the men smiled and said that the louder she screamed, the more he would like it. The second man said that no one would save her and extended his hand to her, when suddenly a light stream appeared from behind the car. They turned around, the main character stood behind him and said that he would argue, and grinningly added that it sounded quite pathetic. He pointed his gun at them. The girl smiled and said, It's incredible that someone came. She desperately asked him to help. Let him take her away from here. The main character recognized the girl and said that they had met once. If she wanted, he could help. The girl screamed that she was begging for him to take her away from here. The main character came closer and said that if she was sure, she should allow him to repay the debt and took out two knives. 
One of the bandits said that where did the freak come from who dared to get involved in the affairs of the Axe Gang and asked if he was tired of living. The second bandit said that if he wanted to die, they would help with it in any case. A bunch of such idiots end up in the sewers of this fallen city every day. They pulled out axes. The main character said that if he understood correctly, no one would notice that they were missing. He was surrounded by a blue light. He extended his hand forward and a glowing sign appeared. One of the bandits noticed this and turned pale, shouting, This is the seal of awakening. He is awakened. The second man, frightened, asked the main character to spare them. They had committed a great stupidity. But this did not help. The main character cut their throats in an instant. The bandits fell to the ground. The girl asked, Are they dead? It was so fast. The main character turned to her. Had she really forgotten him? The girl replied that she really didn't remember who he was, and then the young man explained that they had met before the end of the world in the Lavangia supermarket. She gave her a pass card. The girl finally recognized the guy, so it was him. But how is this possible? She opened her mouth in amazement. Why hadn't he changed? The main character replied that they will talk about it later. Don't worry, since he agreed to her request, he will definitely take her away from here. We need to go. The girl exclaimed, let him wait. Can he help her save her boyfriend Juo Jai? She wiped away her tears and said that her boyfriend was kidnapped by the Axe Gang. They had been hunting them for a long time and said that they were looking for a way to pay them. Today they were supposed to meet, but Juo Jai didn't come. She's sure that the Axe Gang caught him. The main character asked, should I save the guy? But he only promised her one favor and he's pretty sure her boyfriend sold her. The girl fell into a stupor when she heard this. She began to shout that it was impossible. Her boyfriend would never do such a thing. Then they heard voices. A man asked where they were. He saw them running away from this street. A plump bald man said that he needed to come in and see. It was a gang of axes. Juo Jai stood behind them. The girl exclaimed and ran to meet him, saying, Oh God, he's okay. She's here. Juo Jai said, Wang Ting, since she is here, it's wonderful. He turned to the man smiling. The assistant, his girlfriend, was found. Since she is still innocent, no matter how much food he can trade for her, he still needs to pay off the debt. Wang Ting stopped and exclaimed, He's joking, right? The assistant said that her boyfriend was absolutely serious. He sold her and all he needed was a bag of bread. But Wang Ting began to cry, asking again, A bag of bread? She doesn't believe it. He's lying to her. He loves her and couldn't sell her. Juo Jai looked at her with contempt and asked again, Does he love her? He only pretended to be her boyfriend so that he could then sell it as fattening a pig and then killing her. He does this all the time. He kept her innocence for so many years only to sell her for a high price. Wang Ting shook and cried. She said that he was such a freak, how blind she was. A plump man came up to her and told her not to cry because of him, let her go into his arms, and smiling pervertedly, he added that he loved her very much. The assistant had already extended his hands to her, but the main character extended his hand and told him to wait. He doesn't care what grievances they have between themselves, but he promised this girl that he would take her away from here safe and sound. One of the bandits pulled out an axe and said, This young man, he's tired of living. At least he knows who is in front of him. Before he could finish speaking, a knife stuck into his throat and the bandit fell to the ground. The main character asked quite calmly, Who else of them would take the risk? If they don't leave here, he will kill them. The Axe Gang exclaimed when they saw the mark on his hand. He is awakened. They are all just monsters. They won't cope with him. There's no chance. The fat guy said, gritting his teeth, this boy. And who is he trying to intimidate? He thinks that he is the only one who has awakened. They are the law here, and they decide who should leave. The assistant was also awakened, the same as the main character. He had the first level of awakening, stone skin. A Wang Ting exclaimed, is he also awakened? Juo Jai told the girl to simply accept her fate. Her pretty face will not help her save herself. The assistant said that this territory is under their control. Let him give up the girl who is behind him, and then he will let him go. Wang Ting put her hand on the main character's shoulder and told him to just give it to them. She didn't want him to get hurt. The main character smiled and said that he wanted to say one thing now. He keeps his promises. The young man took out a knife and ran towards the enemy. The assistant said that he was looking death in the eyes. He was awakened of the first level, and it would be difficult for his knife to pierce his stone skin. But this didn't stop the main character. He stuck his knife in and cut the man's stomach. The assistant did not expect this and asked how this could happen. He was killed. Wang Ting exclaimed he won. Juo Jai said in despair that this was impossible. The Axe Gang was shocked. 
Is their leader dead? The assistant is a first level awakened one. He is invulnerable. He couldn't die like that. Then maybe this guy is a second level awakened. The main character turned to them and said that now it was their turn. The bandits got scared and said that they were ready to listen to him. Please let him just not kill them. One of them knows where their chapter's supplies are. They can show him where it is. We must run, otherwise they will all die. Juo Jai thought that this was the end. If he didn't run away quickly, he would die. The main character told them to burn in hell and cut them all in a second with his knife. Juo Jai fell to the ground in fear. He said that he was sorry, he was obsessed, and did not want to do this. He made a mistake. Let them have mercy on him. They can use him as long as he lives. Wang Ting was silent. The main character turned to her and asked what she wanted to do with him. Juo Jai fell at her feet and began to say that he was wrong and beg her to save his life. Wang Ting said that in the end he saved her, so let the main character save his life, but she doesn't want to see him anymore. Juo Jai was delighted and thanked her. He promised that he would never do this again. He began to run away. The main character thought, looking at his back, that he had seen too much cruelty during the apocalypse. You can't just let such a person go. He is afraid that such a person may harm himself and others, so you need to leave a mark on him. He raised his index finger and pointed it at the man's back, a stream of light slamming into his back. Wang Ting looked at him questioningly. The main character replied that he did not kill him, but simply released several rays of air energy into his body. If he wanted to kill him, Juo Lai would die in the blink of an eye. Juo Jai thought, Wang Ting and this guy, he leaned on the wall of the house, blood flowing from his mouth. The main character saw something glowing and approaching him, and asked what it was. Wang Ting replied that she did not see anything. He grabbed this luminous object, and a voice in his head said that the system had been received. Congratulations to the user on awakening. It was written on the system window. That the user Liu Zayomo has strength 58, agility 47, level 2 awakening. Awakening points can be used to level up the user or purchase items at the mall. The main character spoke, he really got the system, it's great. It seems that there are still many secrets and mysteries in this world. As soon as possible, he must assemble a team and return to that research institute. Wang Ting grabbed his hand and asked what happened to him. Liu Ziomo replied that he was fine, now she was safe and could go, and he still had important things to do. He thought that this end of the world was becoming more and more interesting and was about to leave, when suddenly Wang Ting grabbed his hand and asked him to take it with him. Liu Ziomo said that he only promised to save her, but did not promise to take her with him. Wang Ting replied that she could help him. The guy asked again, what could she do for him? She said with embarrassment that she had nothing, but maybe this would do. She began to take off her clothes from her shoulder. Liu Ziomo blushed, walked up to her, and straightened his clothes. He thought that she was a good person, and this was the best choice for her. He extended his hand to touch her. But he immediately straightened her clothes and told her to follow him smiling. They arrived in a shopping area. Several girls were standing on the street in their underwear and luring customers. One of them said, turning to the man if he wants to play, then all he needs is a bag of bread. Another girl said that she would do everything to satisfy him after he gave her food. A certain plump man was eating an apple and leading two beautiful girls with him on a leash. When he saw this sight, he said, so disgustingly, and threw the apple on the ground. Several poorly dressed men noticed the remainder of the apple and began to fight over it. Wang Ting and Liu Ziomo passed nearby. The girl said what kind of place this was, she had never been here. The main character replied that this is the princess's area, a paradise for the rich and hell for the poor. Here she can buy anything she wants. Wang Ting asked where they were going. Liu Ziomo pointed his finger at the tall house and said that this is an auction. There were a lot of men in the auction house, and girls in suits were handing out drinks. Some guys said enthusiastically that the city of the immortal opens up access to the wilderness. The awakened ones of the first order will receive more rewards. He turned around when he heard a step behind him. Another man with a microphone came up and said that mine raids were being carried out in the west of the fallen city, and they just needed a master. The awakened ones of the second order, Leather and Iron Man, will appear soon. A certain man shouted from the crowd that the freaks from the group of militant dragons dared to steal their resources. They would see each other in the arena, and whoever did not come was a coward. Someone shouted in response to him that he was not afraid of him. Let him not talk here, otherwise he would feed him to zombies. Huang Ting said, taking the main character's hand, what are they doing here? 
These people are terrible, Liu Zayama replied that she should not be afraid. They are only here because they can easily replenish their supplies here. He saw several girls in suits standing nearby, turning to them. He asked if they could take them to the auction building. He wants to sell something. One of the girls looked at him arrogantly and said that another beggar had come to bargain. Another added, looking straight at Liu Zayomo at first glance, this beggar is not even able to give them anything. He must have come to sell his girlfriend for food. They have already seen people like him. She can't take them where they want to go. Liu Zayomo took out three chocolate bars and said that he wanted to enter auction room number five to participate in the auction to buy supplies. Which one of them can show him the way? Immediately the girls rushed to his feet and said with pleasure, This is chocolate. One of the girls said, seducing him, that she was number one of the girls present here and she had five stars. The red-haired girl took his hand and told him not to listen to her. Let him choose her. She has large breasts and also a lot of experience. The third girl took him by the shoulder and said that she had a long tongue and could do a lot. Liu Zayomo replied with indifference, since they all desire so passionately, he chooses her, and pointed his finger at the blue-haired girl standing nearby. She was surprised and asked again herself. Liu Zayomo replied that it was, he gave her chocolate and asked her to take his girlfriend to the shower and give her new clothes, and he would give her a good reward for it. The girl bowed and thanked him. Wang Ting grabbed his hand and said that she didn't need it. It was too expensive for her. Liu Zayomo took her chin and said that his people should wear and use only the best. Wang Ting was embarrassed and thought that he really said that she was his person. At this time, in auction room 5, the presenter said, Congratulations to the commander of the Armed Assault Combat Regiment. Three mutated zombies, comparable to the awakened ones of the First Order for 1,000 rounds. Wang Ting said, covering her mouth with her hand in surprise, are they even selling zombies at this auction? She has already changed her clothes. Liu Zayomo said that the crystals in the brains of mutated zombies provide a great chance to awaken the powers of an ordinary person and strengthen this, which of course attracts those who wish. As long as people want something, everything can be obtained with the help of supplies in this apocalyptic world. The host of the auction said the next lot is an armed truck, converted by the supreme mechanical master turtle from the fallen city. The starting bid starts at 1 million rounds, she pointed at the hologram of the truck. Its outer shell is reinforced with pure steel and can withstand the attacks of the awakened of the third order, and it can also accommodate up to 20 people. The truck has an 800 horsepower engine, and it can also be called a walking fortress. Liu Suomo said that this is exactly what he needs, because the environment outside the city is extremely harsh, zombies are rampant, to get to this place through the wilderness, they must have a good armored car. A certain man offered 1,100,000 rounds of ammunition from the militant fallen group. Let them sell it to him. Another man turned to him with dissatisfaction. He is from the fallen battle group. Let him not spoil the air with his presence. They are a group of militant tyrannosaurs offering 1,200,000 rounds of ammunition. The bald man shouted asking a question, and this is their bet. They will only get them in their dreams. He offers one and a half million rounds. One of the disputants asked him, Scar did this on purpose, right? Then let him not blame him for what will happen. The bald man asked if he thought he could defeat him. They began to swear and grapple with each other, when suddenly some voice shouted for these weaklings to shut up and get out of here. The unknown man smiled and said that the violent berserker group is offering 2,000,000 rounds of ammunition. This truck will be his. It was the fire monkey from the berserker group, boss number two. Everyone exclaimed, this is the fire monkey, if he also liked the truck. It would be difficult to compete with him in the bidding. Fire monkey is the second leader of the group of violent berserkers in the fallen city. He is not only popular, he is one of the strongest awakened of the second order. The man said smugly that no one would dare take the truck from him. The crowd whispered as they heard that the white feather battle group dared to confront him before being destroyed as soon as they left the fallen city. They can't argue with this man. The fire monkey turned to the presenter and asked her to announce the results of the auction. The girl had already begun to say that she was congratulating Mr. Fire Monkey on purchasing the truck, when Liu Zayomo shouted that he was making a bid. Everyone turned around and he said that he was offering 3,000,000 rounds of ammunition. The crowd of people began to exclaim, Who is this puppy that dared to confront the fire monkey? With 3 million rounds of ammo, you can buy a small fire team. Where is this guy from? He had never seen it before. No matter how rich he is, it is useless if he gets in the way of the fire monkey. He will not live long. The fire monkey shouted angrily, 
How dare he resist him, freak? If he wants to die, so be it. Liu Ziomo said that the man couldn't even afford that price. He and his group of beggars didn't deserve the truck. Liu Ziomo said that he would remember it. They are offering 3,100,000 rounds of ammunition. Liu Ziomo immediately said that he was offering 4 million. The fire monkey exclaimed 4,100,000 rounds. Liu Ziomo confidently responded with 5 million rounds. The fire monkey was furious. He said 5,100,000 rounds, but Liu Ziomo immediately outbid him, calling the price 6 million and grinned. The crowd roared, God, 6 million is the highest bid made in this auction. He is really crazy. He really put such a price on this car. This guy beat the fire monkey himself in the bidding. A man from the group of wild berserkers turned to the fire monkey and said that this price was too much for them. The leader of the group would be very angry. The fire monkey shouted at him to shut up. He did not believe that he could lose to this young man. He turned to Master Turtle and said that a group of wild berserkers would fulfill any one order if he sold the truck to them. The old man said that this is a good offer. The strength of the violent berserkers group is very well known in the fallen city. He agrees to this deal. The fire monkey turned around and said, So what if the guy is rich? That's the end. He lost. The leader is going to take the truck today, and not even the Almighty can take it away, as he already said. Liu Ziomo went downstairs and said that they would look at it later. He turned to the old man and told the master not to be so hasty. He had something here that might interest him. He took out some kind of box. The old man exclaimed in surprise. Apparently, he recognized the object. Liu Ziomo said that this is a 2020 idol figurine. The master can play with it, just like with a real person. The turtle clearly liked this proposal. His nose even began to bleed. The fire monkey asked grinning, What kind of gift is this? Does he think Master Turtle likes this? Only in his places. The value of these toys is not comparable to the value of the group's help. How can Master Turtle agree to this? Isn't the help of a group of rampage berserkers more attractive? No matter how good it looks, it's just a doll. The old man stood up and said, asking the question, Is this Yui Hatano? She is as divine as in the dreams of his youth. Does the guy have more? Liu Ziomo said, of course there is. He threw a bunch of boxes with figurines on the floor. The old man looked at them with loving eyes and said, Yashizawa, Ohashi, Sakurai, Ao, Suzuhara AI. He has everything he wants. Liu Ziomo thought that he had found information that Master Turtle had such a strange hobby. The old man grabbed the boxes in his hands and said that the guy had so many good things, he would trade his truck for it. The fire monkey asked him to wait. He would pay more. The master said that he would sell him the truck. The turtle turned around and said that he apologizes. This old man asks for forgiveness, since after all, these are beautiful idols of the past. The crowd got excited. It's impossible. It's pointless. He just gave up an armored truck for ordinary dolls. The fire monkey will not be defeated, and he cannot change the results. The fire monkey gritted his teeth and cursed. Master Turtle pointed at Liu Ziomo and said that this young man had a promising future ahead of him, and he optimistically wished him all the best. The fire monkey thought irritably that this youth dared to go against him. He turned around and told the gang to gather for an ambush at the exit of the auction house. He couldn't let this freak go. He thought, looking at Liu Ziomo, that this freak would live a little longer, but when he came out, he would die. The presenter announced the next auction lot, and it was a person with very rare perceptual abilities. It was a beautiful red-haired girl named Wu Nan. A fire monkey thought a woman, and also an awakened one with perceptual skills. What a surprise, she looks really good, the men in the crowd thought, wondering when did the auction house become a slave market. One of them thought it was amazing, she has a good figure, she is worth being his. Liu Ziomo thought that this woman was quite good, to survive outside we needed awakened ones with perceptual abilities. The presenter pointed her hand at Wu Nan and announced that she was an awakened perceptual ability with a good figure. Everyone should know that this ability can sense the trace of a madman within a few kilometers. The wilderness core can be detected using its sensory ability and the loss rate can be reduced by 90%. Usually such people are hired only for one time, but it costs from 500,000 rounds. A voice from the crowd shouted that she could sleep with him and help him fight monsters. Don't let anyone take her away from him. He wants her. Let them stop talking and set a price. The presenter said that this time the price was the minimum. But before she could finish speaking, Wu Nan snatched the microphone from her and said that this time she was selling herself voluntarily. In addition to cartridges, she has a condition. 
One of the buyers said that this auction item is quite individual, and what are her conditions? The men told her not to ask, they agree. Let her just say what conditions she has. Wu Nan said that this was the destruction of a group of violent berserkers. The crowd became agitated. Did he hear correctly? The berserker group is one of the three strongest groups in the fallen city. If he goes against them, on the contrary, they themselves will be destroyed. Is this woman crazy? The fire monkey laughed and said that he remembered. She is from the White Feathers group. She is the one who is suddenly able to escape from their grasp. A certain man said that he heard how in the past a group of rampage berserkers ambushed a group of White Feathers and destroyed every single one of them. Apparently the woman managed to escape, but due to her wounds she was unable to get out of the city. Everything turned out just like that, and it's not surprising that she harbored a grudge against the group of violent berserkers. But they are too strong, they cannot provoke them. Even if this woman gave herself to him, he would not be able to fulfill her conditions. The presenter sighed and thought that it seemed like she couldn't let this continue and announced the price of 10 million rounds. Please let them bid. The fire monkey said, does she really think that she can put herself up for auction for revenge? Let him look at anyone in this building who dares to stand up to his group of violent berserkers. Then a hand rose and said that she would give 10 million rounds of ammunition. It was Wang Ting. She asked why Liu Xiaomo still allowed her to participate in the auction. He told her to also experience the feeling of a local tyrant in this auction. The fire monkey pulled out a gun and pointed it at the guy. Believe it or not, but today he will not get out of here alive. The crowd began to stir. The young man dared to insult the group of violent berserkers twice. This guy does not value life and really looks death in the eyes. The fire monkey is holding a gun in his hands and looks angry. Liu Xiaomo said that this is an auction house. Does he want to do it here? The fire monkey asked irritably, what's wrong with the auction house? Do you think the young man is as strong as their group of rampage berserkers? He put the gun up and shouted that today he was declaring personal war on this freak. Let them not interfere if they don't want to die. The crowd got excited. He started shooting. We need to run. He is brave if he dares to shoot at the auction house. Second master of the rampaging berserker group. Even in an auction house, you can't escape from it. The fire monkey fired a shot and said that this puppy should go to the underworld. The bullet was aimed directly at Liu Xiaomo, but he dodged it. Running behind the fire monkey, he said that his bullets were very slow. He pointed his weapon at the man's head. A fire monkey thought, how could he get here so quickly that he couldn't even see him clearly? Is he also awakened? Liu Xiaomo replied that it doesn't matter whether he is awakened or not. He just wants to know if he can get out of the auction. The group moved and said to let their boss go. If the main character moves, they will shoot. The fire monkey told Liu Xiaomo to shoot if he has the courage. Let's see if he can get out of here today. Liu Xiaomo smiled and replied, since he asks him so kindly, he will grant his request. He pulled the trigger. Fire monkey turned and wanted to ask him to stop, but the shot flew through his head. He fell to the floor. The bandits shouted, this guy actually shot, we need to kill him. A burst of machine gun fire was aimed at Liu Xiaomo, but he skillfully dodged the bullets. He said that they were moving too slowly and struck each man with his fist. Now he would no longer be able to stay in the auction house. Liu Xiaomo said that he would leave them alone for now, let them return to their group. The bandits stood up and told him to beware of them. They would go and report this to the boss. Liu Xiaomo turned to the girl and extended his hand, telling her to come with him. No one would dare to do anything to her. Bu Nant said that he should have thought first. There was no need to provoke a group of violent berserkers. Liu Xiaomo replied that she shouldn't worry about it. There's nothing wrong with this pitiful group. Wang Ting told the girl to go with them and become one of the main character's subordinates. Chu Nan was embarrassed to become his subordinate. Maybe he will really help her get revenge. They got out of the auction house. Wu Nant used her perception ability and discovered the enemies. She said that three of the group of violent berserkers were on the left side of the alley. Liu Xiaomo asked her to cover his back, and he would take care of her in a matter of seconds. He ran and killed them in a few seconds, saying that with her help it was extremely easy to deal with these violent monsters. People with repressive powers like her are simply humanoid radars. No wonder so many people want them so badly. Wu Nan asked, what will they do now? He killed the fire monkey. Most likely his brother, the mad dragon, has already put a reward on their head, and they are wanted in the city. Now it will be difficult to move around. Liu Xiaomo replied that if they want to kill him, then they should be willing to pay the appropriate price. Wang Ting turned to him. He asked what she wanted to say. 
She answered with a bowed head that Juo Jai recently asked her to meet him and said that he wanted to apologize, but she didn't want to go. Liu Zayomo said, why doesn't she want to? This is such a great opportunity she should go. He thought that Juo Jai must have wanted the reward. He would just take this opportunity to get rid of him. Wang Ting asked again, why is this necessary? Liu Zayomo turned to Wu Nan and said that he would give some good things, and she would later go and put them in the designated place, as he said. The girl agreed. At this time, at the headquarters of the violent berserkers, a man sitting on a chair shouted that the whole gang was a bunch of pathetic garbage. Why did he raise them? Only three people, and they didn't even lay a finger on them. It was the leader of the berserker group, Mad Dragon. One of the men turned, smiling, so that the boss would not be angry. He brought someone, and he said that he had a way to lure them out. He pointed with his hand at Juo Jai, standing next to him. The crazy dragon said that this punk looks unreliable, and he is quite thin. What can he do? Juo Jai replied that the guy who killed his brother is now together with his ex-girlfriend. He agreed to meet with her, so this guy will definitely follow her. The mad dragon interrupted him and asked again, Does he give guarantees? Juo Jai smiled evilly and said, This girl couldn't ignore him. She will definitely come. The crazy dragon said that he would believe him, but if he was wrong, he would take his kidney. Juo Jai rubbed his hands grinning and asked, But what if he seems to be right? The crazy dragon said that he would give him five packs of instant noodles. Juo Dei replied smiling that the boss could count on him. After a while they met, Wang Ting asked why he asked her to come here. Juo Jai said that he was not good before, so let her return to him and give him another chance. He extended his hand. But the girl hit him and said that he should not even dream about it. Didn't she make it clear last time? A shadow appeared on the man's face. He grinned. So is it because of this young man. Unfortunately, he will die today. Then a gang of violent berserkers appeared. The mad dragon asked where the guy was going to hide this time. The one they were looking for is finally in front of them, and today he will die. There were many bandits, and they were all armed. Wang Ting asked, what's going on? Juo Jai turned to the boss and said that he had found Liu Zayomo, according to their agreement. Wang Ting shouted, was he really using her again? Juo Jai replied that he knew her too well. Her weakness was that she would never refuse him. She will always be like this and will never be able to escape from his control. He laughed and turned to the mad dragon, asking after killing this guy, will he reward him with this girl? She's been with him for so long, but he still hasn't tasted her. The mad dragon said that there was no problem. He turned to Liu Zayomo and said that he would cut him into eight pieces and sacrifice him to the spirit of his brother. Wang Ting, with tears in her eyes, asked the protagonist for forgiveness, saying that it was her fault. But he replied that everything was fine. That's what he was counting on. This is a good opportunity, and it is unlikely that it would be possible to get everyone together in the future, so this is a great chance. The crazy dragon shouted, Has he gone crazy? He wants to kill them all. This guy is so scared that he is going crazy. His subordinates told the boss to kill the guy quickly. They all laughed. He wants to destroy their group of violent berserkers alone. What a joker he is. Liu Zayamo said that he did not come here alone. Today, there is a special gift for their friends on the program. He commanded to explode and Wu Nano pressed the button. There was an explosion. The mad dragon shouted that it was an ambush and he needed to leave. Liu Zayomo asked where they would go because explosions were happening everywhere. Juo Jai said, how is this possible? Liu Zayomo turned to him. Now it was his turn. It seemed like it was the right decision to rely on him. But unfortunately, his story has come to an end. He extended his hand forward and wished him a good trip to hell. Zhuo Jai fell to the ground, asking not to kill him. Wang Ting wanted to say something. Zhuo Jai immediately thought that she could still ask him to let him go. He rushed to the girl and grabbed her hand, saying that only out of old love he would ask her to let him go. In the end, he saved her life. Wang Ting asked, should I let him go? Zhuo Jai replied that she was so kind and would definitely let him go, right? He thought that she would forever remain a toy in his hands? But then the girl stuck a knife into him and told him to burn in hell. The man was bleeding. He did not expect this. Wang Ting looked at him angrily and replied that he was right. She was weak before. Thank you for teaching her a lesson. She turned to Liu Zayomo. The job is done. We need to leave here. Suddenly a voice came from behind. None of them will be able to leave today. Liu Zayomo turned around. There was a mad dragon standing there. Is he a third order fire awakened? The bandit said that it was true. A simple explosion could not kill him. He ran at the main character and shouted that he would not leave here. He was about to hit, 
but then he was hit by a truck right in front of their eyes. It was Wu Nan. She said that she hoped she was not late. Liu Ziyomo said that she arrived just in time. We need to go. Wang Ting asked, Is this man dead? Wu Nan replied that he just lost consciousness, but to be honest, he is quite weak for a third order awakened. Liu Ziyomo suggested that they leave here first, because the noise they had just made would definitely attract many dangerous people, so they left. All this time, a figure was watching them on the roof. She said that because of these three people, a group of violent berserkers bet a large sum. The guy exclaimed, well, it's time to make some good money. The truck was rushing through the city. The men exclaimed why they were driving along the main road. Does the driver have no eyes? He drives so fast like he wants to die. The main characters were being chased. The mad dragon shouted for everyone to get out of their way. The berserkers had come. A group of warlike dragons, a group of ghostly berserkers and warlike dragons, all the best fighting groups in the city. These forces can destroy the entire fallen city. The one who provokes these forces will definitely die. One of the bandits shouted to keep up with them, not to let them escape. Chu Nan said while driving the truck that she saw something in her perception. They were intercepting trucks ahead at the crossroads of the main roads. What should they do? Liu Ziyomo told her to speed up. The truck hit people. They shouted that it was breaking right through. We need to run away from this crazy freak. Wu Nano asked again, should I speed up? The gates of the fallen city are made of thin steel plates, so their car will not be able to pass through them. Liu Ziyomo replied that they would succeed, they would break through it. He recalled how in the auction room he used the powers of the air and overheard one conversation in which some of the secrets of the city gates were revealed. Simply put, when a group of berserkers participated in the production of an iron gate, the steel plate they were given was mixed with some wooden panels. Wu Nan asked to prepare for the impact. The townspeople began to run away from the gate. These people are really crazy. One of the groups laughed. Do these idiots really want to drive straight through the city gates? It's made from multiple layers of armored steel. The truck won't even leave a mark on it. They tried hard, but now it's time to surround them. The mad dragon became nervous. Do they really know the weakness of the city gates? But with the exception of him and his brother, everyone involved in this matter has already been destroyed. What is happening? He clenched his teeth. Chu Nan was nervous and thought that now she could only believe in Liu Ziyomo. She spoke the gas to the floor and closed her eyes. Wang Ting clung to the main character and thought that being able to die with him made her feel very relieved. Liu Ziyomo pressed the button and said that now is the time shells flew out of the car and pierced the gate and there was an explosion. Eyewitnesses were shocked. Were the city gates really destroyed? The truck flew through them at full power. Wu Nan exclaimed joyfully, they did it. Liu Ziyomo said that the real game is just beginning. One of the leaders of the group said, how is this possible? They ran away right in front of their noses. How did they blow up the city gates and why didn't anyone stop them? But if the gate exploded, wouldn't that mean that a crowd of zombies would rush into the city? The bandits are worried. We need to stop them. Fortunately, these are the weakest of them. Let him close the gate quickly. They must finish off these freaks. The cars burst out of the city. One of the guys exclaimed that this group of violent berserkers was really crazy. Regardless of the cost, they must kill this child. This guy is just a second tier awakened. With the strength of a group of berserkers, he will definitely be dead. At this time, the main character's truck was crushing everything in its path. Wang Ting asked, is it not bad that they smashed the city gates? There are a lot of innocent people left there. Liu Ziyomo replied that high-level zombies outside the fallen city are regularly exterminated. Ordinary zombies can't do anything. Don't let her worry. They must thank him for helping them unravel the hidden danger. Otherwise, different or later, these zombies would have broken into the fallen city. He stretched out his hands like bloody clothes. Wang Ting asked, covering her mouth with her hand in disgust. What was he going to do about it? He said that of course it was a little crazy. He threw the clothes with blood out of the truck onto the ground. He will not be given to his pursuers so easily. At this time, one of the bandits was watching through binoculars. He said that he saw this guy's truck. They were ahead. But they stopped moving. It seemed that the truck had run out of fuel. The crazy dragon shouted, It's good. Let them quickly surround them. They slid into a ravine. The groups laughed. Why didn't the guy run away? Did he run out of gas or something? By daring to offend their group of violent berserkers, even if he has nine lives, he is doomed to die. Liu Sterum, lighting a cigarette, asked how could they be so slow. One of the bandits said that after killing the guy, he would take both of his girls. 
Another replied that this guy actually overestimates himself. He thinks that he is some kind of big shot. The crazy dragon said that the guy is surrounded by them, and they will finally be able to take revenge for their people. Liu Ziyomo spoke, asking, Are they surrounded? He threw away the cigarette and smiled, but for some reason he thinks that everything is completely the opposite. The bandits laughed, wondering if this guy really said that they themselves were surrounded. He's really crazy, so scared that's why his mind is going crazy. The boss needs to stop talking nonsense to him. He just needs to kill this young man. The crazy dragon turned to Lucy. He had already fooled him once, but he would not fall for this trick a second time. Before coming here, he checked with the special awakened ones in the regiment that there were no bombs near them. Liu Zai almost smiled and said that the man had really become smarter since he remembered to check if there were any traps near him. But when he checked all this, he forgot about something. Liu Ziyamo pointed his finger back. Crazy dragon turned around. A crowd of zombies was approaching them. This is a trap. The men began to shout that this is not a small group of zombies. It looks like a wave of the undead. A huge horde of zombies surrounded them. The bandits started shooting to stop these zombies. Liu Ziyamo asked if the crazy dragon liked the surprise he had prepared. The man was stunned, so he deliberately attracted the zombies with the smell of blood. Liu Ziyomo replied that it was, when the gate exploded, some of the people died during the explosion, and he happened to have several things with fresh blood. Not bad, right? The crazy dragon shouted that the guy was just crazy. They have nothing more to talk about. He waved his hand and shouted for the groups to get out of here before they were completely surrounded. Suddenly Liu Ziyomo appeared from behind and attacked him with a knife, asking, did the man want to leave? The mad dragon blocked his blow with his broad sword. The blow was so swift that he flew back and shouted, Doesn't Liu Ziyomo want to survive? Once the wave of undead completely surrounds them, they will all die. Liu Ziyomo replied that he didn't care. He promised Wu Nan to help destroy a group of violent berserkers, so he will do what he promised. He grabbed the knife. Wu Ran, seeing this from the car, began to cry, thinking that he was doing all this for her sake. Wang Ting turned to her and said that these days it is difficult to find a person like Liu Ziyomo, she should consider herself lucky. And she herself thought that it was for this reason that she follows him and is always ready to give him everything she has. The mad dragon shouted because the guy is looking for death. He will first kill him and then leave here. Bao Zai will take men to cut a path through the wave of undead. After the boss finishes here, he will meet him there. Bao Zai said, let's kill these zombies. They'll just hold them off and wait for the boss to kill this guy. Liu Ziyomo turned to the mad dragon is there anything in his stupid head other than muscles? Since he dared to come here, he would not give him a chance to escape. The mad dragon shouted, Does he think he is afraid of him? It was not they who fell into the wave of the undead, but the zombies who fell into their hands. They have many people and more firepower. Taking advantage of the current wave of undead, they will definitely be able to cope. Liu Ziyomo replied that they really have more people, but this is only for the moment. He commanded Wu Nan to launch. The girl pressed a button in the car, and shells immediately flew out. The crazy dragon shouted for everyone to hide behind the trucks, but Liu Ziyomo replied that they couldn't hide, it was specially prepared for them. Let him wait on the east and west sides. The shells exploded in the sky. The crazy dragon asked if this was a rocket. What is it? Slippery, and what a disgusting smell. One of the men exclaimed, oh my god it's urine. The mad dragon asked again urine. Liu Ziyomo said that he managed to collect it from the fallen city, and now he gave it to them. The smell of human urine can greatly stimulate the ferocity of zombies, and since they are so close to them, now they will all die. The young man looked crazy. Indeed, the zombies were getting closer and closer to them. The men began to shoot, but they couldn't stand it. The smell on their bodies was too strong. These zombies have gone crazy. They all need to quickly get in the car and escape. One of the monsters attacked the bandit. He began to scream for help. The zombies quickly dealt with each bandit. The mad dragon shouted, not Bao Zai. Hai Keo, Yadong, Jackie Chan, they can't die. The man was in despair, seeing his friends being killed by zombies. Wu Nan approached him from behind. She said that the crazy dragon now finally knows what it's like when his brothers and friends die, right? It turns out he can grieve too, right? The crazy dragon grabbed his sword and shouted that he would kill the girl. Then Liu Ziyomo appeared and said that the enemy of the crazy dragon was him. He grabbed his knife and repelled the mad dragon's attack, saying that while he was here he could not kill his people. The mad dragon shouted that in this case, the guy would be finished and lowered his sword with force down. 
Liu Zai almost spoke. Since he is a third order awakened, he really cannot underestimate him. The girls ran up to Liu Zayomo, asking if he was okay. Crazy dragon, third order awakened, he must be very strong. Should they retreat? The mad dragon shouted where they want to retreat. This freak killed all his friends. Today he will burn him to the ground. The man ran up and attacked Liu Zayomo. A fiery whirlwind erupted from his sword. It was really big. Liu Zayomo picked up both girls and jumped onto the truck. This blow is so strong. The mad dragon turned to him, saying that the guy could have avoided this, but could he avoid the second or third blow? Liu Zayomo smiled and asked who said that he was going to avoid his blows. He twirled the knife in his hand. Since the man is so impatient to die, he will soon send him to reunite with his friends. The girls asked Liu Zayomo not to do this, but he turned around and told them not to worry, he would be fine. He jumped from the truck straight to the mad dragon and told him to take it and die. The man clenched his fist, a fiery sphere appeared in his hand, he aimed it straight at Liu Zayomo, but it turned out to be an afterimage, the main character was already standing behind him. He plunged the knife straight into the man's shoulder, but couldn't hurt him. The crazy dragon turned around in the blink of an eye, Liu Zayomo managed to jump back. Liu Zayomo said, that red fire that is burning now is his third order awakened skill. The crazy dragon said that it is so, now he will show this power. While he is in the flame of fire state, the surface of his body spontaneously freezes, collecting a layer of high temperature flames. He can withstand not only the blow of a knife, but can even resist a bullet. As long as he uses this ability, the main character has no chance. Liu Zayoma was surrounded by wind. He said that he always likes to challenge the impossible. His eyes lit up. He created several clones. The mad dragon shouted that he would chop the guy until he satisfied himself. He wants to cut through a layer of skin reinforced by fire. Does he really think that this is possible? The clones attacked the man. He laughed and said that techniques of this level did not work on him. Wang Ting thought why Liu Zayomo still hasn't dealt a single blow to the crazy dragon. What should they do now? Wu Nan said that Liu Zayomo should aim at the weak point and attack. Only then will he have a chance to break through the mad dragon's defense. But now he is attacking indiscriminately and without any plans. Liu Zayomo was already exhausted and said that he admits that the man is not as bad as he thought. The crazy dragon smiled until his flame went out. The guy could not break through his defense. Liu Zayomo said asking the question, isn't his flame already extinguished? The man laughed and asked, did the flame go out? Let him stop joking. This is his awakened skill. Then he turned his gaze to his body. Where was his flame? Why doesn't it come out? Liu Zayomo said that when he was in elementary school, his teacher told them that one of the necessary conditions for maintaining the combustion of a flame is oxygen. The air contains a lot of oxygen, and it so happened that his supernatural power is connected precisely with the air. All this time he gradually removed oxygen from certain areas, and without it the fire of the mad dragon would not ignite. The crazy dragon shouted, this is the apocalypse. He hasn't believed in this nonsense since elementary school. The guy is definitely lying. Liu Zayomo told the man to just die and rushed towards him. Cutting his neck with his knife, the man fell to the ground. The main character said that it was a pity that a third order awakened one died like this. Wang Ting has already begun to rejoice because Liu Zayomo won. This is great. Wu Nan cried. The crazy dragon is dead. Captain Yu Urfa, their revenge has finally come true. Suddenly, a bright ray of light erupted from the mad dragon's body and hit Liu Zayomo's body directly. The system notified that it congratulated the user on killing the awakened third order. He received 100 evolution points. Liu Zayomo thought that the crazy dragon deserved to be awakened by the third order. The system actually gave him so many points, he was jubilant. The zombies were getting closer and closer to him. He pushed off the ground with his foot and said that Wang Ting and Wu Nan should immediately retreat in accordance with their planned route. The girls jumped on the car and pressed the gas. Wang Ting said that Liu Zayomo would go upstairs. He pushed off the ground and instantly found himself on the car. He shouted for them to immediately detonate the explosives they had buried in advance. Wang Ting spoke well and pressed the button. Dozens of explosions were heard. Liu Zayomo said that the road is open, we must go forward. There was a certain girl standing on a hill nearby. Her name was Fei Fei. She said to Liu Zayomo, could he really kill the crazy dragon? It will definitely be interesting to fight him, won't it? She raised the bazooka and said with the hope that the guy would like the special big surprise she had arranged for him. The girl launched a projectile towards the main characters. 
Liu Xiaomo noticed the approaching projectile. Wu Nan shouted that it was a missile. Liu Xiaomo asked to wait for him and said that he would take care of it. Wang Ting, crying, asked him not to be reckless. He replied that he had to do it and, gritting his teeth, threw his knife straight into the rocket. There was an explosion. A huge cloud of dust blocked the view. Wu Nan thought what was happening. Who fired the rocket? Fei Fei asked, is he already dead? How boring, when suddenly a knife flew out of a cloud of dust and cut her face. Liu Xiaomo came out of the cloud of dust and said that the rocket is a dangerous thing. She shouldn't play with them at her age. The girl replied that in fact he survived the frontal bombardment of her battle baby. He is really strong, but she likes to play against the strong. The girl grabbed two pistols and said that she would let him try these two cute ultrasound weapons. Liu Xiaomo said that weapons of this level are useless against him. She should just give up. He controlled the air in his hand. The girl screamed, does he want her to give up? How I dreamed. She pulled the trigger and told her pistols to shoot him to death. The machine gun fire was unable to penetrate the defense, Fei Fei exclaimed. Is this a protective layer of air energy? Liu Xiaomo rushed forward and said that it seemed like her cuties couldn't do it. It's time for her to stop. The girl shouted that she would not let him do this. This time she would use her special rabbit grenade to deal with him. But before she could do anything, Liu Xiaomo was behind her. He touched the girl and she dropped her grenade. He immediately picked her up and said that with her bomb in his hand, it seemed like she had no chance of coping with him. Fei Fei said grinning, but if this is so, it would be better if he looked more closely. She showed the already pulled pin in her hand. Liu Xiaomo looked at his hand and quickly threw away the grenade, he thought. The enemy is so fast that he didn't even have time to notice how she managed to do it. It looks like this girl is also awakened. There was a powerful explosion. Fei Fei fell to her knees and said, clearing her throat. His reaction was so fast that she did not even have time to react to his throw. Liu Xiaomo put a knife to the girl's face and said that it seemed like it wasn't enough to teach her a lesson. He thought it would be easier to kill her. The girl said that he could try, but she had long ago implanted a mini bomb in her body, so as soon as her pulse stopped beating, it would instantly explode. The energy will be enough to turn this entire area into a huge crater and let him believe that she is not afraid to die here. Liu Xiaomo asked again, is she Fei Fei? She was one of the famous bounty hunters in the fallen city. They say that her ability is to significantly enhance firearms if she joins his team, the guy thought. The girl asked again, if he is afraid to die, let her go. Liu Xiaomo said that he was just wondering if she wanted to join his team. He has a lot of big babies. He had heard that Fei Fei was a weapons maniac, so it shouldn't be a problem to get her to join them. The chewer asked the big babes. She introduced several large men and shouted that the guy was a pervert. How could he say such a thing to an underage girl? She won't join his team, it's disgusting, he's a freak, and he should stay away from her. Liu Xiaomo was stupefied, doesn't Fei Fei like bazookas? But he heard her call them big babies. The girl screamed at him to stay away from her. She didn't want to join the team to satisfy his disgusting desires. Liu Xiaomo turned pale, maybe she didn't understand something. The girl turned away and asked why she misunderstood. If that's not the case, what else can he tell her? She had seen many freaks like him. But for his abilities, he would have been destroyed by her rocket launcher. Then two girls came running to them. Wang Ting asked if he was okay. Fei Fei noticed her figure. Then Wu Nan ran up with the same question, and Fei Fei thought that she had very slender legs. The girls surrounded the guy, he said contently. Now Fei Fei understands that with such partners, does he need to look at the body of a child like her? The girl got angry. Who did this freak call a child? Let her open her eyes wider as an adult. Chu Nan asked where did this child come from. Wang Ting said that the girl looks so small, she must be hungry, right? She extended her hand with the candy. Fei Fei turned pale and fell to her knees, devastatedly saying that she had lost. Liu Xiaomo turned to her. Has she still not decided to join his team? He can provide her with super strong guns. What does she think about this? There are a lot of different weapons in the system store, so as long as he has points, he can provide her with any. Fei Fei lowered her head and said that she did not believe that he had something like that. Liu Xiaomo told her to wait a little, and she incredulously demanded that he show her. Liu Xiaomo told the system that he wanted to purchase a weapon. The system notified that the user now had 100 points. The weapon he can get is the 5th generation Dragon Missile Launcher M78 Nebula. Great class weapons are designed as the best weapons for a single soldier, priced at 70 points. 
Liu Ziyamo thought, smiling, the rocket launcher looks impressive, he clicked on the buy option. Wu Nan turned back, Wang Ting said that the zombies were gathering again. Suddenly a huge cloud of dust formed next to them and a terrifying monster appeared. Wang Ting shouted that it was a mutated zombie. Wu Nan explained, it seems that he was attracted by the large number of zombies in this area. This is Bloody Claw, in terms of strength among mutated zombies, he is one of the three strongest and ordinary weapons are useless against him. She asked Liu Ziyomo, what should they do? Isn't it time for them to retreat? Fei Fei said where he was going, Bloody Claw is an extremely rare type of zombie. She didn't expect to meet him here. The crystal from his brain should be worth a lot of money. The time has come for her weapon. She prepared to attack, but Liu Ziyomo asked her to stop. Fei Fei angrily asked what he was doing. Why was he stopping her? Then she noticed the weapon in his hands and asked what it was. Liu Ziyomo raised the bazooka onto his shoulder and said that this is his big baby, much larger than hers, right? The girl exclaimed, maybe the weapon looks big, but who knows if it works. Liu Ziyomo replied not to worry, this thing is not as weak as she thinks, let her just watch. The mutated zombie was about to attack the main characters. He jumped closer to them and ran towards them. Wang Ting warned that the bloody claw was coming. Liu Ziyomo replied to make sure they knew what he was doing and pressed the button on the side of the bazooka. He spoke fire, a red projectile burst out of the muzzle and hit the mutated monster. Fei Fei covered herself with her hands. This energy explosion is too strong. The bloody claw disappeared in a flash of light. A huge crater formed in the place where the shell hit, and the zombies were gone. Liu Ziyomo put the weapon on the ground and said that everything is ready. Fei Fei was amazed. It was amazing. Liu Ziyomo turned to her asking if she wanted it. If she wants to, first she needs to join his team. Only then will he possibly give this thing to her. Then the girl shouted that the challenge was accepted. As long as he does not give up this weapon, she is free to do whatever she wants. Fei Fei jumped on the guy. Liu Ziyomo replied not to worry. She will go down first. The girl said that she didn't want to. If he didn't give up this weapon, he would never come down. Wu Nan said that they had not yet escaped from the influx of zombies, and these two already had no idea what they had done. Wang Ting laughed. She said good-naturedly for them to enjoy. It feels like everyone has returned to the world before the apocalypse. Night came. The main characters were sitting near the fire. Liu Ziyomo said that it was already late. They needed to wait out the night here. It was quite high here, so ordinary zombies would not rise here. They would be safe. Everyone would take turns on duty. He will be the first, so let everyone go to bed. Fei Fei asked, what about her big baby? Liu Ziyomo replied that until he trusts her completely, he will not give anything away. Let them go to bed. Fei Fei exclaimed that he is a liar. He will not give it up because he does not want to. She goes to bed. The other two girls also decided to go to sleep. Each of them thought that as soon as everyone fell asleep, she would go to Liu Ziyomo. Meanwhile, he was lying on a chair and thinking that several days had passed and there were already three people in his combat team. The expansion is going faster than he thought. It's time to go to the Mysterious Research Institute. Suddenly the door opened slightly and Wu Nan came in. He asked why she was here. The girl replied that she wanted to thank him for helping her kill the mad dragon to take revenge. Liu Ziyomo replied that she shouldn't be so polite. Isn't he from his squad? Shouldn't he have helped her? It's late. Better go to bed early. Then the girl said that she swore that she would give herself to someone who could take revenge on her. She began to undress. Liu Ziyomo was embarrassed and said that this is not good. The others are not that far away and they can hear. Wu Nan replied that everything was fine. She checked everything when she came out. Everyone was fast asleep. She clung to his chest. The girl said that she had nothing before. Could he be gentle with her? He thought that this was the end of the world, so everything was fine. Then Wang Ting knocked on the window and asked if he was inside. They both thought, why is she here? The girl said that she wanted to ask him for something while she was here and reached for the handle of the car. Wu Nan asked what should she do. Liu Ziyomo told her to hide behind the seat. Wang Ting walked inside and asked what was wrong with him. Why was he sweating so much? Liu Ziyomo smiled and said that everything was fine in the car. It was a little stuffy. He thought that if a leader was caught being inappropriate with his subordinates, he would lose his authority and it would be difficult for him to lead the team. Wu Nan blushed and covered her mouth with her hands. If Wang Ting saw this scene now, it would definitely be embarrassing. But why did she come to him in the middle of the night? Just like her. Liu Ziyomo said that this car is too stuffy. 
Why don't they go outside and talk about it? He thought that if they sit in the car all the time, Wu Nan will continue to be afraid of being discovered. They need to find a way to get Wang out Tin. The girl said that this is not necessary. We need to talk about it here. If they go outside, they might disturb the others and accidentally wake them up. Liu Ziomo thought, it can't be that Wu Nan was just like that now and Wang Ting has become the same. But Wu Nant is hiding behind them, and he can't do anything. It's so hard to be a man. He turned away and said that although he had a good impression of the girl, they were still in the wild and not safe. So now it was a little inappropriate. Wan Ting asked again, is it inappropriate? She looked at her body and covered herself with her hands, asking what he was thinking about. She came to him today because she wanted him to help her become awakened. She wants to become stronger, because now she is too weak to help him. Both exhaled, which means she just wanted to become awakened. Then the girl sat on her knees and said that if he wants, she will always be ready. The guy exclaimed that today might not be the most suitable day, but Wang Ting replied that she didn't think so, why not? Then there was a knock on the car door. It was Fei Fei, she asked. Is Liu Ziomo here? He asked what she was doing here. Wang Ting asked why Fei Fei is here. If she is seen like this, it will be terrible. She must find a place to hide. She looked behind the seat, told the guy to cover her and dived there. Liu Ziomo shouted for her to wait and turned pale. He covered his face with his hand. The door opened, Fei Fei appeared and asked what he was doing. And she thought that it was late at night, he must be lonely. If she used some seduction techniques, she could get her hands on a dragon flame rocket. Liu Ziomo said devastatedly that it's all over now, everything is revealed. The girl asked again what was revealed. Then Wang Ting screamed, why is there someone here? Who you are? Let Liu Ziomo go and take a look. She was worried. Wu Nan replied that she should not panic. She is here. Wang Ting asked how come she is here. Did they just get together then? Wu Nan replied that it was the same as with Wang Ting. Fei Fei trembled and wondered, surprisingly, are they both here? He is really a big pervert. They are not even shy. Fei Fei was furious. Liu Ziomo replied that it was all her fault. Let him keep quiet and hit her on the head. The girl looked back at him angrily. The next morning they were on their way, Liu Ziomo sitting on top of the car. Wu Nan was driving the car and thought that nothing happened last night. As long as she is not embarrassed, others are embarrassed. Wang Ting was embarrassed and thought that last night was so humiliating, she didn't expect Wu Nan to be there. Suddenly, Fei Fei said loudly that she did not expect Liu Ziomo to be so strong since he could withstand two at once. Wu Nan exclaimed and asked what she was talking about. Wang Ting said that there was nothing between them. Both girls were very embarrassed. Fei Fei said that there is nothing to be ashamed of. In any case, many similar things happen in the post-apocalyptic world. As long as the girls don't care, maybe the head will create a harem group later. The car braked suddenly. Fei Fei hit her forehead on the glass and exclaimed why Wu Nan reacted so strongly. Wu Nan pointed her finger forward and said, This is different, look ahead. Fei Fei looked out the window. The road was filled with zombies and several cars with flags. They got out of the truck. Wang Ting exclaimed, Why are there so many zombies here? Fei Fei spread her hands. This is the most convenient road to the outside world in the city of Fallen Leaf. Now they will not be able to get out. Liu Ziomo stood up and looked into the distance. Wu Nant asked what to do now. He told them to get in the truck and leave. Something was wrong here. This flag may belong to the guys from the Legion of Assassins. Wang Ting said okay and was about to get into the car when one of the arrows almost pierced the girl. Wu Nan rushed to intercept the arrow and shouted for Wang Ting to be careful. The arrow almost pierced her, but Liu Ziomo quickly reacted and managed to cut the arrow with his knife. Wang Ting took his hand. She was discouraged and did not understand where this arrow came from. Liu Ziomo felt someone's presence and spoke loudly so that the enemy from the Legion of Killers would appear. A certain man laughed and came out of the shadows with a group of bandits. He said that he did not expect that he could gather several excellent girls today. The man took one of the arrows and said that his master would be very lucky. Another bandit said that this chariot looks expensive. They were very lucky today. The third guy said that he was only interested in girls. He would go first and fight with anyone who dared to steal them. It's just a pity that the men there are skinny. They don't have only a couple of kilograms of meat, so they have to be content with food. Fei Fei said, they are hungry, how disgusting. Wu Nan activated perception and said that there were only 18 of them in the area. 
Liu Zai almost smiled and said, 18 people, and they dared to pursue them. He turned to the men and said that they were here to allow him to gain experience. He thought that they could catch the leader and get some information. The bald man said that the main character has gone crazy. There are only four of them, and he looks down on them. The bandits began to scream. This arrow was just a test. Their captain is the Awakena of the Peak of the Wind, and just one arrow will kill the enemy. Liu Zayomo said contently, a second rank wind awakener, and also good with a bow and arrow. He is really strong and worthy of fighting with him. The bald man became angry. What did he say? Liu Zayomo took a fighting stance and pulled out his knife. He said that he would give them three attempts, let them shoot him and hit at least one. Liu Zayomo's eyes lit up. He will kill him. The man said that the guy was looking for death, and Liu Zayomo waved his finger from side to side and replied that he was giving him a chance to survive. The man became completely furious. This boy still dares to say what gives him a chance to survive. He will pay for this with his life. The man grabbed the bow and pulled the string. The arrow flew at the main character, but he said that it was too slow and dodged it. The man didn't expect this. He dodged it so easily. The bandits behind were also surprised. He dodged the captain's shot. Looks like this guy is also awakened. There is no need to panic. The captain is fighting with all his strength, even if the guy is not particularly proud of it. Fei Fei wondered what Liu Zayomo was doing. He can easily take out an enemy in one hit, so why does he want to use the three arrow plan? She thought that compared to last time, Liu Zayomo's speed had increased, which means this guy is getting stronger. Wu Nan thought, Liu Zayomo wants to gradually destroy the enemy's spirit. Wang Ting said that she should not even think about such a thing. He is merciless towards enemies and apparently did this on purpose, distracting the man. Liu Zayomo said that the first arrow did not hit. He only had two left. He thought that he was too far away. He needed to come closer. He must make sure that he can stop the enemy with one blow so that he does not signal the army of death. The man pulled a bowstring with four arrows and shouted that he would destroy him in one fell swoop, let him die. He thought happily, the guy must have already died. This is the only way he can scare his subordinates, who can attack him at any moment. This attack was called Four Arrow Rampage. Liu Zayomo skillfully dodged each one and mockingly asked, What is all this? How weak is he? Is this all he can do? How did such a weak person become a captain? Liu Zayomo smiled. He approached the enemy and thought that this distance was almost enough. The bandits became worried. This guy is really strong, but the captain won't lose, right? The bandits shouted that this is nonsense. The guy doesn't want to find out how he became a commander. Then he will show him. Windy currents came from the man. He pulled his bow and shot. Liu Zayomo became wary. The man caught his breath and said that the guy was now unable to evade. Clouds of dust enveloped them. The rest of the bandits rejoiced. How great it was. Who would have thought that the commander was hiding such a cruel signature move? With such a huge range, this boy is doomed. The commander is truly the strongest. It's good that he didn't run away now. The column of dust cleared, and the man noticed that there was no body in the resulting crater. What happened to that boy? Then he heard an order not to move, and saw a knife next to his throat. Liu Zayomo spoke, asking, is he looking for him? He swung his fist, but the man quickly turned around and asked how he could get to him. Liu Zayomo said that he was talking too much and kicked him in the stomach. The third salvo is completed. Now his life is in his hands. The man prayed that the main character would not kill him. He could tell his information about the Chulu troops. Liu Zayomo asked what kind of information this was. The man replied that he could tell where the main forces were located and why so many madmen had gathered here. The guy needs to figure out how to cross the bridge, right? This information will be very useful. And I thought that all I had to do was give an alarm signal, and they would immediately come here, and then the boy was doomed. He was about to press the button in his hand, but Liu Zayomo noticed this and said that his hand was a little restless. The man did not expect this, as he noticed. Liu Zayomo threw his knife, and in the blink of an eye, the hand with the button was on the ground. The man looked at the rest of his hand and screamed in pain. He shouted for the others to immediately return and gather the main forces of the Legion. This guy is too fast. You need to spread out. Liu Zayomo asked Fei Fei, could she and Wu Nan deal with these freaks? The girl asked why she would listen to him. Even though she agreed to be in the squad, this does not mean that she will obey him. He tests her, and she tests him too. Liu Zayomo replied if she doesn't want to, then let her not do it but he first wanted to give her a great treasure to play with. 
As soon as the girl heard these words, she turned around and said, So that the respected commander does not worry about this, so many more may come to these ten and a little freaks, she will be able to deal with everyone and grabbed her bazooka. The girl took a shot and said that it was for the sake of a great treasure and for the sake of her late grandfather. The shell fell straight into the crowd of bandits. They shouted that they should have left long ago. They were wrong. Let the girl have mercy on them. This woman is terrifying. Wu Nan stood with Liu Xiaomo and said that the princess was really full of energy and her participation was not needed. Liu Xiaomo stepped on the commander and told him to stop yelling, let him immediately tell the information about the Chalu troops, and don't even try to lie. He has a lot of ways to make him regret it. The man shouted what he could say, but let him first promise that he would let him go. Liu Xiaomo stabbed the sword right next to his leg and made a condition. Either the man speaks now, or he will force him to cut off all five of his limbs. The man got scared and shouted what he would say. A new regiment has appeared in Chula. Probably there are more than a thousand people and more than two hundred awakened ones. They blocked the bridge specifically to attract the madman. His task here is to check everything and capture the lured madman for sacrifice. He's just a platoon commander. He really doesn't know anyone else. Liu Xiaomo thought, The strength of the Chulu army is known as well as the city of Loi. Their atrocities cannot be compared with these types. Why are they in the vicinity of Loi? The passage is still blocked. What is their goal? The man stood up and said that he had told everything. He could go and began to run away. He thought that this boy dared to cut off his hand. Let him wait. Come back right away and bring people to kill him. And then deal with his girl. Suddenly he felt pain and noticed a blade in his chest. Liu Xiaomo said that he did not promise to let him go. He just appeared and was already dead. The man managed to draw a sign in the sand while bleeding. Liu Xiaomo pulled out a knife and said that the scum from Chilu deserved to die. Then he noticed that a green light appeared from the man's body. He took the small green ball with his fingers and it immediately burst. Liu Xiaomo was horrified, oh no, this is the seed of the awakening plant. He turned towards the girls and shouted for everyone to leave here. They had been discovered. Everyone ran to the truck. At this time, in the camp of the Chulu army, several men were discussing the situation that yesterday the patrol came across a combat detachment. They, strangely enough, resisted. As a result, all the men died, but the women, the speaker laughed. Another voice answered him. He was lucky that he came across the madman. He had been holding back for many days. Another man said that they had not played so cruelly, since several women from the camp survived. The red-haired man named Ji Feng looked at his hand. He wondered why the head ordered him to block the passage to Loya. Besides, Loy hasn't reacted in any way in recent days, which is strange. He looked at the green lights and exclaimed, The commander of the 5th patrol squad has died. He remembered him as a second level awakened and strong enough, who would have thought that he would die like that. The person who killed him must be exceptionally strong. It's interesting, they've been here for so long that the endurance is wearing thin. The man smiled evilly. It was time to move on. At this time, the main characters were driving along the road. Fei Fei exclaimed, Why on earth should Liu Xiaomo and Wu Nan sit in the front, and she should sit in the back? She wants to sit in the front too. Liu Xiaomo slapped her on the head and told her not to make noise. Chalu's people could arrive at any moment, so let her sit until they returned to Loi. He slapped her on the head. The girl muttered that they would be afraid to come, and they would immediately fight back. Liu Xiaomo said that of course he is not afraid, but unfortunately now their forces are too small, it will be quite difficult to defeat a large army. We need to figure out a way to invite more people. Wang Ting was thinking at this time that she needed to figure out a way to become stronger, she didn't want to involve Liu Xiaomo in this again. Suddenly Wu Nan saw dust from behind and shouted that a car was catching up with them from behind. Liu Xiaomo looked out of the window worriedly, have you arrived so soon? Several vehicles rushed out in pursuit. Yi Feng shouted that the prey was right in front of them, not to let them escape, because they dared to provoke his Chulu army. You need to skin them and turn them into noodles. They will kill the men and keep the women for themselves. It's time to hunt. Yi Feng grabbed the bazooka in his hands and said that he would send them a gift first. The man fired a shot. Wu Nan shouted that they needed to watch out for the rocket. Fei Fei got out of the car and told them to calm down. She was here which means not a single rocket would hit the target. The girl pointed her weapon at the enemy's projectile, which collided and exploded in the sky. Fei Fei laughed contentedly. She is a master when it comes to great treasure. Yifeng asked, do you like the treasures? Then I'll have a lot of fun with it now. 
let his friends fire all the rockets. And the more he likes a person, the less he offends him. The girl said that they were impudent. Yifeng angrily asked, how will they cover themselves now? Give him fire. Several shells flew into the air. Fei Fei was obviously worried about this. She asked Liu Zayomo to help. She alone could not resist this. Liu Zayomo appeared from the car and grinned that she still couldn't give up the treasure to anyone, and in the end, she still called her older friend. He put both hands forward and concentrated the airflow, creating an air wall above the machine. The shells hit this and exploded before reaching the truck. The pursuers stopped and asked, What is this blue wall made of air? Stopped all their missiles. This boy is also an awakened one. Everyone needs to be careful. But if the boss is here, then the guy is doomed. Yifeng thought, who would have known that there was such a special awakened one? He got out of the car and told Liu Zayomo that he was interested in him. Liu Zayomo replied that he was not interested in men. He jumped off the car and told Fei Fei that the speed of the enemies was greater, so they would not be able to get away. Let the girls go forward, he will catch up later, but for now he will detain the bandits. The girl nodded and told him to be careful. Liu Zayomo said that in any case, the treasure will remain in the car, so he leaves the safety of Wang Ting and Wu Nan to the girl. She raised her thumb up and told him not to worry so that it wouldn't happen to them. She was in charge. The car drove away. Wang Ting was worried and asked that the main character come back. Yifeng asked, they want to leave, but didn't they forget to ask him? He ordered him to bring the girls here. The bandits shouted that the boss should not worry. They would definitely grab these girls. Several cars went in pursuit. One of the bandits shouted that he would show them what a real man is. Liu Zayomo said, do you want to catch up? but they didn't ask him. He concentrated his ability and shouted, air wall, and touched his hands to the ground. This appeared in front of the pursuers, and immediately all the cars crashed into an obstacle and exploded. The remaining bandits began to shout that the cars crashed against the wall. They could not continue the chase. They first needed to kill this young man. He's tired of life. Liu Zayomo thought that with his level, constantly showing abilities is still a little annoying. Yifeng lit a cigarette and asked, he constantly uses signature moves, must be running out of strength. Liu Zayomo turned around and said that this would be enough to deal with little fish like them. He grabbed his knife and drew a line on the ground, saying that whoever crossed it would die. His entire body was engulfed in a glow. Yifeng crossed his arms and said that this sounds creepy, let his minions go and play with him. He thought that Liu Zayomo was not bad, he needed to wear him down first and then find out the information. The bandits move towards him. They need to take advantage of the fact that he has not yet recovered and kill him. Liu Zayomo grabbed two knives. Flames emanated from his body. He said that the extermination was beginning, and in an instant he rushed between the enemies, stabbing everyone to death. No one even had time to react, although only a second had passed. Liu Zayomo stood opposite their boss. He said that the first ones were finished. Yifeng appreciated his speed, but thought that this speed should have a limit. The bandits shouted that they needed to shoot. He was too fast. They couldn't let him in. One of them ordered to open fire, prepare a multiple launch rocket system. Several bandits began to fire their weapons, but Liu Zayomo said that such things could not stop him. The shells exploded. He was able to dodge. The bandits got worried. The bullets were no good for him. The distance needed to be increased, but they were already too late. Liu Zayomo jumped above them and killed them all. Explosions were heard and men were heard screaming. One of the bandits said that the main character was finished and pointed his bazooka at him. Liu Zayomo turned around and replied that he would not succeed. He threw the knife directly at the projectile. It exploded and the bandit was thrown back by the explosion, severely injuring him. Yifeng thought while watching this that this was amazing speed. Looks like there's only one way to deal with him. He pulled the cigarette out of his mouth. The wounded subordinate asked him for help. He replied that he could not be saved and stepped on him with his foot. Liu Zayomo turned to him saying that now it was his turn. Yifeng replied that he admits that he is really strong if he joins his group. Yifeng will pretend that nothing happened. Liu Zayomo will become his deputy and he will have everything he wants. How does he like such an offer? The man thought that they could already feel the seeds hidden in his subordinate. Liu Zayomo replied without hesitation that he was not interested in such things. Yifeng immediately attacked him. In that case, let him die. Branches began to grow from the bodies of the dead lying on the ground. Liu Zayomo was surprised. These were seeds. Yifeng shouted that this waste is nothing more than soil for growing seeds. Among all these branches, his speed is nothing. It is a dead end. 
Liu Xiaomo began to cut the branches and shouted that the man was a devil. Let him come to him. He Feng folded his hands near his face and used the technique grab. The branches began to pull towards the guy. He shouted that he would cut them all. Yi Feng smiled viciously. It was useless to fight. He couldn't escape. Liu Xiaomo's legs began to get entangled in the branches. He thought that things were bad. The man raised his fist and said that the guy should die, and with the next attack, he would direct all his shoots directly in his direction. Liu Xiaomo confidently said that only he would die here. There was a flash of light, and he surrounded himself and the man with an air wall. Yi Feng was shocked. He asked what does this all mean? Liu Xiaomo said that his air wall not only repels attacks, but also forms a cage that can isolate a man from plants, so there is nowhere to run. Yi Feng was scared. How is this possible? He said, grapevine suffocation. But the branches did not listen to his order. Liu Xiaomo was not taken aback and struck, cutting the man's chest. He fell to his knees and grabbed his wound. Liu Xiaomo said that in his territory, all pitiful attempts are in vain. Yi Feng began to get up and said that he could not kill him. If he dared to kill the boss, all those girls would die. Liu Xiaomo said, smiling, well, they weren't caught. Yi Feng took out a walkie-talkie, by the way. He had already sent people in pursuit, but he himself wanted to detain him. I didn't think it would work out. He asked if Liu Xiaomo really thought his guys couldn't catch them. Now news will come about their capture. Liu Xiaomo looked at the sky and said that the man was underestimating them. Meanwhile, in the desert, Fei Fei said that there are only a few dozen of them. She is afraid of them too few. The enemies lay defeated on the ground. They were defeated, their firepower. Where did such ferocity come from? The men called for help. Fei Fei was pleased with herself and exclaimed with laughter that she was too cruel. Perhaps there will be someone who can stop her. Wu Nan looked out of the car and told the girl to stop boasting. There were two more left. They needed to be dealt with, and then they would go to Liu Xiaomo. The two men behind the stone trembled. All their people are dead. They need to call the boss quickly. One of the men grabbed the walkie-talkie and asked his comrade not to be nervous anymore. There is a signal. They are asking for help. Fei Fei appeared above them, smiled and said that she had found them. The men shuddered. They managed to say that they were mistaken and screamed to be saved. Yi Feng heard the screams and said contently that now Liu Xiaomo can listen to the screams of his charges. Suddenly, a man's pleas for help were heard from his walkie-talkie and that all the subordinate bosses were dead. Yi Feng couldn't believe his ears. Liu Xiaomo laughed standing above him and said how pleasant the screams of his people were. Yi Feng trembled as he shouted, How is this possible? He shouted into the radio what happened. Let them respond faster. Liu Xiaomo shouted that this was enough and knocked the radio out of the man's hands. Now he will not be able to return. He brought a knife to his throat. Yi Feng raised his hands up and asked not to kill him. He would tell everything about the Bloody Legion. As far as he knows, the main ones have entered into an agreement with the City of the Fallen Leaf and want to block the bridge. Liu Xiaomo told him not to lie. Otherwise he knows what awaits him. The man said that this is the pure truth. Before coming here, he saw a man in black enter the office of their leader, and it was definitely the head of the city of Fallen Leaf. He heard them say that the pigs were already fattened and ready for slaughter, and something else about the price of salt. Liu Xiaomo thought that he needed to wait until his strength was restored. He asked, Are the pigs fattened? Are the pigs normal? Or were they referring to something? And what does this have to do with salt? Weren't the prices of salt in the city of the Fallen Leaf stable? Then clouds of smoke rose from behind. It was the girls returning. Wang Ting waved from the car and shouted joyfully that they were back. She asked how he was. Not injured? Liu Xiaomo waved his hand and replied that he was fine. He had dealt with their boss. Suddenly, Yi Feng pulled out a knife and pointed it to strike. Wang Ting shouted at Liu Xiaomo to be careful. Liu Xiaomo grabbed the blade of the knife with his hand and asked, Does everyone from the Bloody Legion really use such low methods? The enemy did not expect this, and the young man quickly cut his throat. Yi Feng said that he couldn't accept this, how could he die here, and fell down dead. The girls exclaimed and ran to Liu Xiaomo, he's okay. They surrounded him and began to ask about his well-being. He wiped the floor from his forehead and replied that it took a lot of effort to pave the way. Fei Fei put her foot on the corpse and asked what he would do next. Even though this guy is dead, the rest of the squad is still around. They may fall into a trap if they start crossing the bridge. Liu Xiaomo replied that he was not one of those who retreat halfway. He smiled and said that he had already dealt with the bosses of these subgroups, so he would also easily deal with them. Wang Ting asked him what he was thinking of doing. 
He replied that he was planning to infiltrate the Legion, the heroes began to whisper. At this time, there were many trucks parked in the main camp of the Extermination Legion. One of the bandits turned to Van Ergo. Where did he get so many girls? That's lucky. Several tied-up girls were sitting in the truck. The man from the cab replied that he came across them while he was going to look for supplies. Many members of the squad died while they were capturing them. The man said that these were not bad girls. They were on good terms with him. Maybe he would let him try them out. He extended his hand to one of those sitting. Wang Ergo shouted, He's about to die, Mr. Niu Yifeng has not arrived yet. How dare he do anything? He can have fun with them after the leader. The man exhaled and where did the boss go? He's about to die from anticipation. Liu Ziomo thought, This seems to be the camp of the extermination legion. How can he get there? All this time he watched from afar, hiding behind a stone. He looked at the tied up zombie lying next to him and said, Let's see if he can do it. He took off his bandage, and the zombie rushed towards the base. One of the men guarding the base exclaimed, asking if there was an infected person nearby. Haven't they all been exterminated yet? The two guys behind answered that they had already checked several times. Judging by the voice, he alone must have come from the other side. The man replied that stop talking nonsense, let Meng Zai and she too deal with him. Hurry up, the camp is closing. The guys rushed forward. They came closer, one of them asked why the zombie was tied up. The guy behind said that something was wrong here, it was better to go back. Suddenly Liu Ziomo appeared next to them and put knives to their throats. He said that they could not return and cut their throats. Their boss heard the sound and asked what they were doing. He heard a voice that it was too dark here and Meng Zai had been bitten. Zombie blood splashed on him, help. The man said dissatisfiedly that this guy could not be saved, let Meng Zhu and this madman deal with it quickly. He went inside the base and expressed his dissatisfaction out loud, being bitten by a zombie, what a shame. Liu Ziomo grinned, it's time to pacify these guys from the extermination legion, they have been rampant for too long. We've lost all vigilance, but that's even better. Liu Ziomo changed into the clothes of one of the bandits he had killed and came out from behind the stone. He turned to the boss and said that everything was ready, only Meng Zai died. The man was dissatisfied. What kind of idiots could you die killing zombies? Mate is covered in blood. Let him get out of here and wash himself. Liu Ziomo said that he was obeying and thought that he did not expect that he could fool them by dressing in Shi Tu's clothes. The boss said, turning to a group of bandits, What is this? Recently their guys were killed by that woman killer. If today anything else goes wrong, their bosses will cut their heads off. One of the bandits turned to him and told the boss not to worry. She wouldn't dare come here. And if he comes, he will fall into a trap. According to the survivors, that girl has a magnificent body shape. If they catch her, her man will laugh. Liu Ziomo heard this and thought, what kind of woman is the killer? Has anyone else got their eye on the Legion of Extermination? Not far from the camp, a girl named Yu Rui watched this happen. She gritted her teeth and said that Xuaner and the others were kidnapped by this Extermination Legion. Perhaps these freaks have already abused them. Two girls behind them with weapons said that they are ready. Let them just tell them what they need to do. The girl ordered to begin. Another girl with long golden hair grinned. They thought she wouldn't be able to reach them if they were sitting in the camp. She jumped off the cliff and said that everyone from the Legion of Extermination must die. At this time, Fei Fei, lying by the stone, said, How long will Liu Ziomo bother? She is bored. Wu Nan replied that she should not worry. Liu Ziomo said that they could take action after a fire started in the camp, so they need to wait for news. Wang Ting held the box in her hands and said that Liu Ziomo was already taking a lot of risks. They shouldn't make him wait. Better prepare some explosives. She had dynamite in her hands. Fei Fei replied that she would also help, smiled and said that she couldn't wait for the fireworks to start. At this time in the camp, Liu Ziomo thought that the guarded tents must be exactly what he needed. They become active in the second half of the night. Then he heard voices as he passed by one of the tents. Someone said, Xuaner, hurry up. They must do everything before they notice them. Another voice replied that you shouldn't get caught. Liu Ziomo wondered, are these women's voices? In one of the tents, a girl named Kin Xuan said that she was almost finished. Another girl hurried her with a croak. Their salvation depended only on her. The blue-haired girl cut the rope with a piece of glass and exclaimed that they succeeded. She got up and went to untie the other girls. Be careful not to discover them. Liu Ziomo moved the canvas aside. He wanted to say something. Kin Chuan became nervous. Things are bad. They got caught. She stood up, holding a shard of glass, 
and shouted that the extermination legion had discovered them. The other girl screamed at her to run and leave them. Liu Xiaomo said devastatedly that it seemed they had misunderstood everything. Qin Shuen thought that now it would be more difficult to escape, and she would have to fight. She looked furious. Liu Xiaomo tried to say that he was not a bandit, but the girl shouted that he should die and wanted to stab him with a shrapnel. Liu Xiaomo gritted his teeth in anger. Did she not hear his words? He grabbed her hand with the fragment and told her not to rush. He was not from the Legion of Extermination. King Chuan shouted, is he taking her for a fool? Who else besides a man from the Extermination Legion could appear here in the dead of night? She tried to kick him. Liu Xiaomo jumped back and told her to let her prove it. But you can only be convinced by physical force. They started to fight. Liu Xiaomo shouted that he is not from the Extermination Legion. He wants to destroy them. Doesn't she understand? The girl screamed that she didn't believe it, and what was he doing? Let him not touch it there. Liu Xiaomo replied that if he were from the Legion, he would have killed her long ago. She is stupid. He tied her up with a rope and spanked her lightly. Qin Chuan blushed all over and demanded that she be released quickly. One of the girls was shocked. This guy spanked Qin Chuan herself. He doesn't look like a person from the Extermination Legion. Maybe Yi Rui's friends sent him. Liu Xiaomo asked the girl, does she still not believe him? Qin Chuan said that she believed it, but she was very angry. He spanked her. She will never forgive it. Liu Xiaomo bent down and began to untie her, in which case he would help deal with the rope. They have to listen to him, and if they want to get out of here. Then one of the bandits appeared at the entrance to the tent and asked what the noise was. What is he doing with these girls? Liu Xiaomo thought that things were bad. He quietly asked the girls not to do rash acts and turned to the man. Why did the boss come? Qin Chuan thought, what is this guy up to? The man turned to him and covered his nose with his hand. What did he forget here and why wasn't he sleeping? And why haven't you washed yourself yet? Liu Xiaomo replied that when he was going to the shower, he heard some sounds, so he decided to check. It turned out that one of the girls was preparing to escape and even cut the ropes, so he decided to tie her up again. The boss praised him, saying it was a good job. Liu Xiaomo thought that he needed to somehow deceive the man in order to escape unnoticed. The boss looked at the girl and asked if she still wanted to run away. When Chief Yifeng returns, he will take care of her first. Liu Xiaomo turned to the man. After all, it is still unknown when the leader will return. Why don't they have fun with her before that? In any case, it is her own fault. We can say that she arranged the escape. And when trying to catch her, they accidentally killed her. The boss thought about this sentence. Qin Xuan thought, didn't Liu Xiaomo deceive them? The man said that the guy's words made sense, not bad, she still wanted to run away. He began to approach the girl. Liu Xiaomo thought that he had succeeded. The bandit turned to Qin Xuan and said that now she would experience his skills, he laughed. She looked behind the man and asked, will he try out his skills? The man turned around questioningly. Liu Xiaomo stood behind him and asked, what does he think is stronger, his dagger or his neck? He cut the man's throat, covering his mouth with his hand. He didn't even have time to understand anything. The girls were shocked. Liu Xiaomo ordered them to hide here. As soon as they hear the explosion, they immediately rush to the exit, but he needs to do something. He untied King Xuan. She blushed and said, it turns out his goal is not to save them. He got here with other motives. Liu Xiaomo threw a gun at her and said that the extermination legion dared to play against him. He must punish them. Let them take care of themselves and remember that there is no need to act rashly. If they are caught again, he will not save them. He was already leaving the tent when the girl exclaimed who else should take care of themselves. The other girl was delighted. What a cold-blooded murder. Handsome and cool. How attractive he is. One will go up against an entire legion. Oh no, it seems she's fallen in love. Another girl admitted that she imagined that he hit not Qin Xuan's friend, but herself. The girl untied them and said, whose side are they on? One of them replied that she was on the side of the savior. Qin Xuan herself was grateful to him, although she did not express it in words. She was confused. In a region where more than a thousand people were exterminated, would he succeed? What kind of recklessness? Outside the camp, one of the bandits said that he was very tired and wanted to take a nap. Let his partner look after everything here. The old guy replied that he was also very tired. Why not look after him and let him take a nap? Then they heard footsteps. One of the men turned around to find out who was there. Liu Xiaomo approached them and said that he was Shitak. He almost fell asleep just now. Damned night watch, then asked if they had a lighter. 
the blonde bandit replied that they also wanted to sleep and handed over a lighter, just let she talk share a cigarette. Liu Ziyomo replied that smoking helps to stay awake. Another bandit lit a cigarette for him. The flame illuminated his face. He said, and she too became more beautiful. Liu Ziyomo raised his head and said that he had always been so handsome. One of the men didn't even have time to say anything before Liu Ziyomo had already cut their throats. He turned around and exhaled. He was almost done here. All that was left was to get rid of those two guards so that Fei Fei and the others could enter. He approached the next guards and asked if they had a lighter. He realized that they were not answering and extended his hand to one of them. The men fell, blood flowed from them, which means they are dead. He crouched over the corpses, so he wasn't the only one who snuck in here. Suddenly a female figure appeared next to him. She asked him to be silent and touched him, otherwise he would die. The girl had a knife in her hands. She asked him to raise his hands up and slowly turn around. Liu Ziyomo stepped aside, raised his hands up and asked who she is. He tensed up and thought that she was very fast. He couldn't even notice her. The girl said that first he must say his name. Liu Ziyomo asked why this. The girl said, this is because his life is in her hands. In the blink of an eye, she was behind him and wanted to kill him. But she could not break through his defense and the guy jumped away. She was surprised with what kind of awakened ability he could block her knife. Liu Ziyomo replied that she did not need to know this and attacked the girl, but she quickly jumped back, turned over in the air, and landed on the ground. The stranger said that she needed to end this. She remembered him. She disappeared. Liu Ziyomo thought that she was very fast, but his priority was to destroy the extermination camp. Therefore, he will not chase after her. Even though she killed the locals, he is still not sure whether she is a friend or an enemy. He straightened his cloak. Suddenly, there was an explosion above him. The girl said that this was a parting gift. Good luck. Liu Ziyomo covered himself with his hand. She did it on purpose. The bandits in the camp woke up. They shouted that they were attacked. They were being attacked. Get up. Liu Ziyomo spoke into the walkie-talkie so that they would move on to plan B. They would reveal it. Let the girls run into the ambush in advance and he would lure the enemies there. Wu Nan responded well and told the others that the enemies had found Liu Ziyomo. They won't be able to kill the high-level ones as they planned before. Now he will lure them all into a trap. They are acting on plan B. Fei Fei laughed. It's finally time for her dragon rocket launcher. There is no time to waste. You need to run faster. At this time, Liu Ziyomo was running away from his enemies. They were shouting that he had killed their friends, so he couldn't escape so easily. He asked the girls if they were ready yet. Wu Nan radioed to tell him not to worry. Fei Fei smiled. Her big baby had been waiting for too long. Wang Ting crossed her arms and thought to Liu Ziyomo to be careful. He shouted into the radio for them to start. Fei Fei attacked from the mountain. The enemies immediately realized that it was an ambush. One of the bandits shouted that they had snipers. They were trapped and needed to retreat. Fei Fei said that they not only have snipers, let them taste her weapons. She pressed the button and a powerful projectile exploded the ground. Liu Ziyomo said as he watched this, this is what you come to when you have no morals. If there is no law in the world, then he will become that law and he will decide what is right and what is wrong. Liu Ziyomo said that everything was finally settled. He looked back at the happy and satisfied Fei Fei who was hugging the gun and saying that his baby was very useful. Wang Ting asked if Liu Ziyomo was okay. He replied that everything was fine. Wu Nan said, It's a pity that the two escaped and they didn't kill everyone. Liu Ziyomo replied that there was nothing wrong with that. Someone else would take care of them. There was an explosion ahead. Wu Nan tensed and asked, Is there anyone else there? Liu Ziyomo told them not to worry. They are not their enemies. A crowd of girls appeared in front of them. In front of them was Qin Shuan. She said that they finished off those two and thanked the main characters. She extended her hand forward to shake hands and introduced herself, but Liu Ziyomo did not shake it. He said his name and said no problem, then turned and said he needed to get out of here. Qin Shuan exclaimed for him to wait a second. He turned around and asked what else did she want. She pressed her hand to her chest and replied that they had just experienced all this horror of crazy people nearby and zombies. They must have been attracted by the sound and they would be here soon. Since they are all women, can they stay with him today? Liu Ziyomo asked her, does she want him to protect them? The girl said hesitantly, only today, and then they will leave at dawn. Does he mind? Liu Ziyomo shook his head from side to side. He was against it. Qin Shuan was surprised. She did not expect such an answer. One of the girls shouted to Liu Ziyomo that Qin Shuan never begged anyone. 
and he refused her immediately and shamed her in front of everyone. In fact, he takes advantage of the situation because they are all beautiful girls. Liu Zayomo said that at least he was not some brainless fool. They want him to be their bodyguard for free. Then they should give him something in return. King Xuan was confused and asked, Then what does he want? She wondered if he really wanted her to spend the night with him. Liu Zayomo replied that they have two options. The first is that they will go their separate ways and take care of themselves. The second is that they will join his team and he will be their boss. King Xuan was surprised. It turns out he doesn't want her to sleep with him. It's not that she looks down on him, but now there are only four people with him. What a wretched team he has. Will he cope if they join him? This isn't the final answer. They just want to know he can handle it. Liu Zayomo replied that he and his team had just destroyed this camp and they were their prisoners. Isn't that enough? The girls doubted. Yirui came out, she said. Let him tell her this. Combat strength is one thing, but material capabilities are more important. Can he feed all of them? The girls rushed to her. They were glad to see her. They knew that she wouldn't leave them. This guy really destroyed this whole camp. He's just something. The girl said that she was just going there to save them, but it turns out he was ahead of her. Liu Zayomo asked who she is. King Shuan said, let him introduce the two of them. This is their boss Yi Rui. They have always followed her before. Liu Zayomo thought that the overall strength of their team was not bad. If he could make them work for him, then everything would be much easier for him. Yi Rui noticed that he did not answer her question. She recognizes his abilities, but how is he going to feed them? Lucy flicked his fingers and said it was easy. He used the ring to place food supplies on the sand. The girls exclaimed, so much salt. Is this sausage? She hasn't eaten it for months. He even has chocolate. She hasn't eaten it since the beginning of the post-apocalyptic world. Liu Zayomo pulled all the objects back into his ring. He said that now they had seen everything and extended his hand with the chocolate bar. Let them decide on their own to leave or stay. Yi Rui put her hand to her chest in doubt. The girl behind her asked if they could join his team. They haven't eaten normal food for a long time. Another confirmed that they will work for food and not for the person who hires them, not to mention the fact that he has plenty of supplies. All the girls pounced. One of them said that he also saved Kim Xuan's sister, so he must be a good guy. You don't have to worry that he will betray them in some situation. Yirui shouted for them to stop. She turned to Liu Zayomo and said that in addition to all these supplies, each of them would receive 1,000 rounds of ammunition every day. Liu Zayomo said that he was ready to give them 2,000 rounds of ammunition, but they must obey him unquestioningly or he would kick them out. In terms of supplies, he can guarantee salt for every meal. As for the rest, you will have to work hard for it. The girl smiled and said that they agreed, holding out her hand to him. She thought that being able to eat salt with every meal was already better than other mercenary groups. It was a good deal. Liu Zayomo said that he hopes for good cooperation. The girls jumped for joy. They now have salt. This is very good, because finally they won't have to worry about it. One of the girls shouted that this salt could kill any level 2 crazy person with one blow. Hirui added that this is the relationship between employer and employee. He is their boss in battle, but he should not even think about using them in any other way. If he dares to force anyone from their team to do something like that, she will not forgive him. Liu Zayomo shouted rule number one to never talk to him in such a tone. He grabbed her by the throat. Instead of worrying about what he would force them to do, let her think about their behavior and do not let them slip into his tent at night. He let her go. The girl coughed. Yirui told him not to dream. No one on her team would ever behave like that. Suddenly she noticed girls who called him master and said that he was very handsome. They surrounded him and asked if he was free now. It doesn't matter, even if he has a girlfriend, he doesn't mind having a couple more, right? Let him say what type of girls he likes best. Don't misunderstand her, she means age. Yi Rui trembled after such a sight, she shouted that they had never seen the guy or what. Why did they start looking at him like that? King Shuin turned to her and told her not to be upset. Let them do what they want, who knows how long they can live, considering what the world is like now. You just need to have fun. Yirui exhaled and spoke with hope that she had made the right decision. Let Liu Zayomo not let her down. The next day they were in the camp. Wang Ting said that all the supplies had been counted except for instant noodles, cigarettes, sausages, and so on. And she also found this. The girl held out the crystals on her hand. Liu Zayomo took them in his hand and examined them. They were bird crystals and energy crystals from a space meteorite. This type of crystal contains the richest energy, some of which can even be converted into water directly. 
He didn't expect that such a small camp had such good things. The girl said that they say that an ordinary person can become awakened if he absorbs some of the energy from him. Wang Ting asked if she could become awakened using this. She thought that when she became awakened, she could help him more. Liu Zayomo said that these crystals in her hand could harm her body. The energy is unclean. He thinks that they should wait. Wang Ting bowed her head. It was clear that she was sad. Liu Zayomo patted her on the head and told her not to be upset. He would help her turn into an awakened one as soon as they found a suitable crystal. He thought that she would need to find suitable crystals, and Wang Ting smiled and said that she trusted him. Yirui came out and said that they had all gathered, let him give the orders. Liu Zayomo said that his first order was to eat well. Everyone was stunned, they rejoiced, and were grateful to him. The girls shouted that they loved him very much, finally they could eat. There was a pleasant smell coming from the pan. One of the girls said that it smelled too delicious, she had been dreaming about rice for a long time. Kin Chuan exclaimed, What's on their mind? What other rice? Stop dreaming about it. One of the girls said that the owner was preparing porridge for them, otherwise it could not smell like rice. Another girl said that judging by the smell, at least he definitely put some rice in the pan. Wang Ting said that everything is ready, we can start eating. They all sat down near the big pot, Wang Ting opened the lid, could it really be rice? Not porridge, but real, simple, steamed rice. The owner is really willing to feed them rice. This is exactly the same diet as the mayor of the city of Loy. The girls cried. Since the post-apocalyptic world began, Kin Chuen has been trying the rice. It smells delicious. She can't stand it anymore. Let her let you fill the bowl first. She wants ten bowls of rice. She doesn't mind even if she dies from overeating. Wang Ting said that they should not rush. They will bring more dishes. One of the girls asked about some other dishes, maybe cucumbers. Wang Ting smiled and said that it would be better than cucumbers. Did the girls think better than cucumbers? Then what is it? They can't wait anymore. What could be better than cucumbers? A Fei Fei and Wu Nan appeared. They carried a large saucepan, putting it on the ground. They said that today it was boiled cabbage. They peppered it a little. The girls exclaimed, Did the owner really pepper the dish for them? Isn't pepper more valuable than salt? Kin Chuan said that 50 grams of stock pepper is the same as 500 grams of salt. Let her calculate the difference herself. Wang Ting told them not to wait and come quickly, otherwise the cabbage would be cold and tasteless. They began to pour food into bowls. One of the girls said that it reminds her of her mother. She often cooked spicy cabbage rolls. When that day came, her mother blocked the zombie at the door just to protect her, although usually she couldn't even lift a bucket of water. The girl burst into tears. Her parents were killed when they saved her. All her family members and friends have been dead since the post-apocalyptic world began, but only today did she feel like she was living as a human. Wang Ting rushed to hug the girl and said that everything was fine. She had tears in her eyes. She said that even though the girl lost all the members of her family, from now on they are her family. Liu Zayomo was sitting nearby by a stone. He was smoking a cigarette and thought, when will this post-apocalyptic world end? Liu Zayomo looked at the bridge filled with zombies and said that their first goal was to destroy the monsters on the bridge and break through it. Yirui stood nearby and watched through binoculars. One of the girls said that there are a lot of zombies on this bridge, about 1,000, and besides, the terrain is not ideal. It's not easy to fight. Where was the owner planning to go, making his way across this bridge? Kin Chuan cheerfully promised that they would fight if he ordered them, they would all carry out his orders. She thought that Liu Zayomo almost single-handedly dealt with that squad of killers. He is very strong, so together with him, it will not be difficult to deal with these zombies. Liu Zayomo said that Fei Fei, the others, and he will not participate in the battle this time. The girls will fight all the zombies on their own. Kin Chuan was surprised. Why is this if he won't be there? Liu Zayomo said that he just wanted to see how strong they were without him. He gave what he promised. Now it's time for them to show him their worth. They must fight for everything themselves in this post-apocalyptic world. If they can't even handle these zombies, then he shouldn't even be keeping that much trash around. King Shuan exclaimed, How could he say such a thing? Yirui told her to stop being indignant. He was right, there are no free lunches. To get something you need to do something of equal value. King Shuan said that she knew. She just thought that he was very rude. She was upset. Yirui said that he is the boss who pays money, she does it for a fee. All she has to remember is that she is working. He pays. What difference does it make what his attitude towards her is? She patted her on the shoulder and shouted at all the girls to fight. 
They're just a bunch of mindless zombies. Will they go with her to destroy them? The girls answered in unison, of course. Now that they are full, it's time to train a little and digest the food. They can easily deal with this bunch of zombies if they act together. Yirui shouted perfectly all behind her, attack. Wang Ting asked at this time, King Xuan and the others will be fine, right? Wu Nan replied that Yirui and the others did not have heavy firepower with them. They could get injured or even die fighting like this. Liu Xiaomo lit a cigarette and said that in this world, it is impossible not to suffer or die. It is better to taste suffering now than to suffer later, when the entire squad is completely destroyed. Fei Fei replied that he was right. People die every day. Liu Xiaomo looked at her discouraged and said that children should not swear or smoke. And next time let him not repeat after him. He took the cigarette from her. Fei Fei was angry. He is the child here. She is obviously very big. At this time, a team of girls cleared the way, shooting from firearms. Yirui ordered them to prepare grenades and throw them at the zombies on the front line to prevent them from gathering together. Wang Ting exhaled, it seems that Xin Quan and the others seem to be fine. Wu Nan replied that no one was hurt or died. Liu Xiaomo smiled, they are really doing a good job. Suddenly a huge mutant zombie appeared and ran towards the squad of girls. Yirui became serious, it was a mutant zombie. He swung. The blow was so strong that several cars flew off. Many girls were thrown back. Yirui said that we all need to shoot together and kill him. They opened machine gun fire on the monster. Wang Ting said that this is not good. A mutant zombie has appeared, and Yirui and the others seem to be unable to restrain him. Fei Fei exclaimed, she can take him down with just a few shots. She raised her dragon cannon. Liu Xiaomo forbade her to do this. Explosions from the dragon rocket launcher could lead to the collapse of the bridge. Wu Nan asked if he was going to help. He replied that until he acts, we'll see how everything goes. Let them not forget that Yirui is also awakened. Let her show him what she is capable of. Kin Chuan turned to the commander. This is not helping. The mutant zombie's defense is too strong. They can't stop it without strong fire support. They just have to ask Liu Xiaomo and the others for help. Yirui gritted her teeth and said that there was no need she would stop him. The girl used the thick skin skill. She shouted for the others to take care of the remaining zombies and left this one to her. The monster struck, but the girl stopped it with her hand. A powerful shock wave scattered from them. She jumped back to a safe distance and caught her breath. He's pretty strong. The monster instantly appeared next to her. She cursed and activated the thick skin skill again. Irui repelled his attack again by defending herself with a blocking blow. But the mutant zombie broke through the defense, and the force of the blow threw the girl back. Yirui sat on the ground, breathing heavily. Why is he so difficult to defeat? The monster raised his hand above her. Wang Ting and the rest of the group shouted that Yirui was going to die. Liu Xiaomo quickly went downstairs. The mutant zombie attacked the girl. Kin Chuan said that it was all over. The other girls were dumbfounded. Maybe Yirui had died. Tears appeared in Ken Xuan's eyes. She began to curse the zombies and grabbed a grenade. The girls ran up to her and asked her to stop. One of them pointed into a cloud of dust and said that their friend seemed okay. The clouds of dust cleared and Liu Xiaomo appeared, holding the girl in his arms. Yirui asked him why he was here. Didn't he say he wouldn't help? Liu Xiaomo replied that he was just worried because the bridge might collapse if they continued to fight. Ken Xuan breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, Liu Xiaomo made it in time. Now their commander is safe. Wang Ting watched from the cliff. She said, if he is there, there should be no problem. The zombie mutant became furious, gathered all his strength into his fists, and almost hit the main character. But he managed to jump back to the team. Other girls came running to them. He turned to Qin Xuan and told her to take care of Yi Rui, and he would deal with this zombie mutant. The girl asked him to stop. The monster is very strong and it is very difficult to defeat him head-on. In her opinion, it is better for them to retreat first and use weapons to destroy him. Another girl turned to Liu Xiaomo and said that Yirui was right, they should retreat first. They all said that it was too dangerous to fight a mutant zombie alone, in case something bad happened. Fei Fei has a rocket launcher, doesn't she? They can take the mutant zombie away from the bridge and blow it up, it will be safer. Liu Xiaomo said that he doesn't intend to waste much time here should they cross the bridge today. He jumped on the monster's head with the help of his skill and shouted that he would get rid of anyone who stood in his way. He struck the zombie twice in the chest and it fell to the ground. Liu Xiaomo said that the mutant zombie is dead. 
let them deal with the others as soon as possible. The girls couldn't believe their eyes. Did he defeat him so easily? This zombie mutant almost killed Yi Rui, but could not withstand even one blow from him. Kin Shuen said in surprise that their master was too strong. Yi Rui thought, she thought that the only difference between her and Liu Zayomo was that he had more resources than her, but she didn't expect that there was such a gap between their fighting skills. Now that she looks at it, working with Liu Zayomo looks like they are taking advantage of him. He asked the girls not to just stand there, but to immediately get rid of other zombies. Kin Chuen ordered to quickly move out, they need to destroy all the remaining zombies and make them alive. The girls grabbed their weapons, and after some time, they were able to clear the bridge. It is necessary to remove the cars at the same time, throw zombie corpses into the cars to remove it from the road, nothing should prevent them from passing. Liu Zayomo thought that after they crossed this bridge, they would have to travel several hundred kilometers more to get to the research laboratory, who knows what else awaits them ahead. Yurui turned to him and sadly said that they had done a bad job in capturing the bridge. If he wants to terminate the contract between them, she is not against it. Liu Zayomo smiled and handed over a certain document, telling her to take the paper. The girl exclaimed, Is this a notice of termination of their cooperation? But they have not yet officially concluded an employment contract. One of the girls exclaimed intelligently, It seems this is an employment contract for a period of 10 years. Wow, the benefit package mentioned in this contract is very good. They can eat meat once a month. This is no worse than being in the top three military units in Loya City. Yirui asked why he did this. He replied that they passed his test and waved his hand. After some time, it was already evening. Zombies wandered through the streets of the city. Yirui shot them with a pistol. She got off the car and told Kin Chuan to take a few people and carefully inspect this city to make sure that there will be no more zombies here. Also let him send several people to check the perimeter of the city and stand guard. King Xuan obeyed the order and said that she would go with her. Yi Rui told Liu Zayomo that they had advanced a few days after crossing this bridge. Now they are several thousand kilometers away from Loi City. Where are they going? What if they encounter a large group of zombies? Liu Zayomo stood behind with a map in his hands and said that they would know the answer when they reached their destination. After dinner, let her gather all the team members. He has something to say. The girl remained standing in a stupor. She wanted to shout something after her. But Wang Ting turned to her, saying that she was worried about the safety of the team members, but not to worry. Liu Zayomo is not one of those who achieves his goals at the cost of the safety of his team members. Yirui chuckled before this. The longest distance between them and Loi City was only a few hundred kilometers. Now they are several thousand kilometers away, and they still need to move forward. The further they go, the more unknown dangers they may encounter. Liu Zayomo studied the map and thought that after passing through this city, they would soon reach the Tiger Village. After passing through this, they would find a research laboratory. But more than 10,000 zombies and dozens of mutant zombies gathered at the pass in front of the Tiger Village. He thought about the fact that he lost half of his elite soldiers when he passed through this place in his past life. And now he must find a way. He exhaled heavily. King Shuen ran and called Yi Rui, shouting that it was urgent. She was out of breath and when the girl asked what happened, she said that they saw a large group of zombies not far from this city. Their total number was more than 20,000. They also noticed dozens of mutant zombies there. They need to inform the owner about this as soon as possible. Yirui was shocked, such a large group of zombies. She will immediately report this to Liu Zayomo. He walked up to her and said that she didn't need to mention it again. He already knew about it. He remembers that this group of zombies was far from this city when he went to the research laboratory in his previous life. Why are they so close this time? In addition, there are more of them. Yi Rui said that it is not safe here and they need to find another place to stay for the night. What if these zombies attack them at midnight? Liu Zayomo said that they could leave here today, but they would return tomorrow. She constantly asked him about the destination, so they will get to their destination after passing through this group of zombies. Yirui couldn't believe her ears after passing through these zombies. Kin Shuen also shuddered. Yirui shouted, he must be joking. There are tens of thousands of zombies and dozens of mutant zombies that can even destroy the joint defense of the three best squads in the city of Loya. He just wants to destroy them all. Liu Zayomo got angry. He asked if she would contradict him. Let him tell who is the boss here, she or he. She shouted that she knew that he was the master, but could not send them to certain death. 
Wu Nan told Liu Xiaomo to calm down. Yi Rui did not say this on purpose. Wang Ting confirmed she just lost her temper because she was too excited. Please let Liu Xiaomo forgive her. Kin Chuan said that she didn't want to contradict him. It's just that the group of zombies is too large. Liu Xiaomo warned that this was the last time. If she still contradicted him, he would strip her naked, hang her, and beat her. The girl exclaimed, Then let him tell them how they can get through these zombies. They are in the total minority. Their cars will definitely be destroyed. Liu Xiaomo grinned and said that he knew what he was doing. He showed the map and said that they need to convert their cars according to this drawing. He bet the zombies won't be able to stop them. Yurui unfolded the drawing. She asked again, Is this a drawing for the conversion of their car? She took a closer look. One of the girls exclaimed that she didn't even think that they could transform their cars like that. They had retrofitted their vehicles before, but they only added armor and spikes for protection. If they modify their cars according to this blueprint, they will be able to attack zombies with the cars. Where did you find these drawings? They are amazing. The girl's eyes were burning. Liu Xiaomo replied that it doesn't matter. They don't have much time. Let the girls prepare the materials and start re-equipping. He thought that he bought these drawings in a store. That's why they are cool. Yi Rui said that the drawings are really good. They can even convert the truck that was found a few days ago according to these drawings. But the converted truck will definitely be used as a vanguard. The truck driver will be in great danger. Liu Xiaomo said that this is what he wanted to say. He needs a fearless driver who will clear the way for them in a converted truck. The girls asked, should the road be cleared? This means that the truck will go first and all those zombies will rush towards it. The truck can easily fall into a trap. There are more than 20,000 zombies and many mutant zombies. Anyone who falls into this trap on a truck will be torn to pieces. It's entirely possible that a converted truck could break through zombies, but what if it doesn't? Girls are doubtful. Irui shouted for everyone to shut up. Those who undermine their fighting spirit will be immediately kicked out. Liu Zayomo thought that sometimes she might contradict him, but she does not do it maliciously, and she is always the first to solve problems. For him, she is very useful. The girl turned to Liu Zayomo and said that she would be the truck driver, but he replied that she was a combat commander if she drove the truck. The girl interrupted him and said that everything was fine. But then Kin Chuan intervened in the conversation and asked if she would allow her to drive the truck. Yi Rui exclaimed, There is no way she is that strong in battle. She has stone skin, and even if she is surrounded by zombies, she can at least defend herself. Kin Chuan exclaimed that her driving skill is the best in the squad, and the truck drivers have a serious responsibility. If she makes a mistake, the entire squad will be in great danger. They began to argue. Liu Xiaomo remained discouraged and stood on the sidelines. Yi Rui argued that she was right by saying that she had stone skin, and Kin Chuan said that her driving skill was better than hers. Liu Xiaomo told them to stop arguing. Kin Chuan would drive the truck, and he would help clear the path while sitting on the roof. Yi Rui is responsible for coordinating military operations, and this decision is final. In addition, he will give the truck driver five meteorite crystals as a reward. And if she dies in battle, he will give another five meteorite crystals to whomever she tells. The girl replied that this was not necessary, because without his help, she would have been raped by members of that murder squad. Liu Xiaomo blushed and shouted at her to just take it, and shoved the crystals into King Xuan's hands. The other girls whispered, they didn't expect him to give meteorite crystals as a reward. So generous, she can buy a lot of food with five meteorite crystals. If she had known this from the very beginning, she would have agreed immediately. Besides, Liu Xiaomo would be sitting on the roof of the truck. The guy took the cigarette out of his mouth and said that he wouldn't let his team members die in vain, but they had to work before they got paid. Those who want to get something for nothing should immediately leave the squad. It will be very dangerous when they go straight through the zombies, so now is their last chance to escape. He will terminate the contract of employment and allow them to return to the city of Loi. They can also take food, ammunition, and transport with them. Yi Rui said that they could leave without her consent, but in the future they should not contact her. There was silence in the crowd. The girls shouted in unison that they were not afraid and would do it. They believed that their master can kill all those zombies. They decided to follow Yi Rui because they didn't want to be the toy of those freaks, right? Nothing can stop them. Liu Xiaomo ordered them to immediately begin converting the machines. They leave tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And now the girls were already busy re-equipping the cars. Yi Rui commanded, This is wrong. The front panel is not there. 
She doesn't understand the drawings at all. What she installed there is completely wrong. One of the girls looked out and said that it looked like the commander had made a mistake. The installation of this part should not be like this. Another girl shouted who said Yi Ru won and made a mistake. In her opinion, she says everything according to the description in this drawing. Yi Rui carefully studied the drawing and after sweating, she told the girl to keep quiet. If they continue to make noise, they will re-equip it themselves. One of the girls said that they don't know how to do it because they don't understand this drawing at all. Can they ask the owner to help them? Yi Rui exclaimed that they always ask the owner to decide something for them. Are they themselves good for nothing? Liu Zayomo appeared behind her and told her to stop blaming others. She was holding the drawing with the wrong side. The girl shuddered. He took it in his hands and told her to let him do it herself. Yi Rui was embarrassed and told the others not to laugh, but rather let them watch how the owner will refurbish the car. From now on, no one is allowed to bother him over such trifles. A couple of minutes and Liu Zayomo had already completed the task. The girls were jubilant. Their owner was simply magnificent. And Liu Zayomo said that since they had finished with the re-equipment, they could make a fire and cook dinner. Wu Nan came over and said that she had just checked the shops in the area. And she found all sorts of things. There are so many buildings in this city. She suggests looking for supplies here. Liu Zayomo replied that they could find some food. He ordered to split into several groups and go look for food. The girls obeyed. One of them exclaimed, searching for food is her favorite task. If they find food, the owner will definitely give them a treat. She hopes that they will return with mountains of food. Liu Zayomo said, there's a whole grocery store here. They'll start from this store. They walked inside. Wang Ting smiled and asked Liu Zayomo, is this store similar to the one where they first met each other? He smiled and said that she was right. Wang Ting blushed. If he hadn't helped her, she would have. Suddenly, Fei Fei interrupted her, pushed them apart, and said that she was getting goosebumps because of them. Couldn't they go somewhere else to talk about love? They need to look for food. Wang Ting was embarrassed and ran out of the store. Liu Zayomo thought that she had been with him for so long. Maybe it was time to marry her. She immediately returned and shouted that she had found sausages. Fei Fei said she didn't expect that they could find something like this here. This brand of sausages is very famous and delicious. She shouted that they needed to quickly plunder it and pointed to the food stand. She found a whole box of instant noodles here. Chu Nan found canned pork meat and cookies. Then Yi Rui appeared and asked, let them guess what she found here. In her hands were oil, salt, sugar, sauce, vinegar, and seasonings. There are so many seasonings. Their dinner tonight would be the perfect combination of coarse flavors and appearance. The girls opened their mouths in surprise. Fei Fei fervently asked, what did Liu Zayomo find? He got nervous and said that they were just some useless things and he was going to throw them away. Fei Fei's eyes lit up. She said that she didn't believe him. Had he really found something good? Let her have a look. The guy shouted at her not to come near him. Fei Fei attacked him and clouds of smoke rose from their fight. She was sitting on top of the guy and her underwear fell out of the box. All the girls were very embarrassed. Liu Zayomo lay there crying, he said. Didn't he say that these were useless things? But Fei Fei argued otherwise. Wu Nan asked how he managed to find such things. Another girl replied, Who would have thought that the owner had such taste? The third girl said that she could recommend several girls to him, and they would wear it if he wanted. Fei Fei stuck her finger forward and said that he was a pervert. She knew that he had bad intentions towards her. Liu Zayomo hit her and told her to shut up. She was just a child to him. Why should he have any intentions towards her? Fei Fei bent over in pain. She began to cry. He is an idiot mocking her. Wang Ting interrupted the conversation and told them to stop scolding. They need to look for more stores. Since there is not much food in the small grocery store, they can find even more in others. The girls ran out into the street with enthusiasm. What are they waiting for? Go ahead. If they are lucky today, they will be able to eat whatever they want. Wang Ting said that everyone had left and turned to the box of underwear. She thought that Liu Zayomo was interested in this. She would take a couple. Maybe she could surprise him someday. Then Kin Shuan appeared behind her. They invited each other to choose first and said that they would keep this secret between them. At night in the city square, the girls collected all the supplies they managed to capture. One of them laughed. She never thought that there was so much food in this city. Today, they could eat well. It seems that this city is too far from the city of Loy, so it hasn't been robbed yet. They're lucky. One of the girls looked into the box and asked, Why is the underwear here? 
So awkward, Kin Shuen raised her finger to her mouth and said that this is her master's taste. She brought the laundry here because he is embarrassed to admit it. The other girl laughed and asked if he really liked this. How about wearing these lingerie and seducing their owner? What do they think? Wang Ting said that dinner was ready and opened the pan. The girls rushed there with curiosity. What are they eating today? Maybe meat? They would be happy. Wang Ting said that today they will have noodles with ham. Someone asked, do they eat meat? Ham is also one of the types of meat. They all thanked Liu Zayomo. He came out with a box in his hands and said that he had found something good and brought it for them. Fei Fei asked sarcastically, is it something good? Just don't let him say that he found more underwear. He turned around and told her to shut up. He pulled out the bottles and said that he found this in one of the basements. They could warm up a little. There was wine in the bottles. Yi Rui noticed that the owner still fighting zombies might not be the best idea. He replied that there was nothing wrong with that. There weren't many bottles of wine here. There was a little bit of everything for everyone. Everyone will sober up by tomorrow morning. She told no one to get drunk. Kin Shuen said that this wine is quite strong. Friend Yi Rui would like some. Oh, so nice. Only the upper class of the city of Loi could take a sip of wine. Liu Zayomo sat and thought that many might not survive tomorrow, so he would just let them enjoy as much as possible today. Then Kin Chuen ran up to him. She grabbed his hand and sat down next to him, saying that he saved her before, but she doesn't know how to pay him properly. If he doesn't mind, she can devote herself to him. The guy calmly said that she was drunk. The girl stammered and said that she was very sober and just wanted to spend time alone with him. He asked her to stop joking. Others were watching them. Then K. Rui came up to them and asked what she was doing. The girl, noticing her, said that they didn't do anything. They just had a good chat. Liu Zayomo thought that his savior was here. He was happy. Yirui paused and exclaimed, she can't spend time with her master alone. Let them do it together. And she attacked Liu Zayomo. He was dumbfounded and asked what was going on here. Kin Chuan explained that Yirui gets drunk easily and passes out after one sip of wine. The girl whispered how she wanted to spend time alone with him. The next day, the entire squad gathered near the cars. Liu Zayomo said that later, when they fight the zombies, Kin Chuan will drive this large jeep. The rest will follow her, and everyone will only move forward. No one can stop without his order. Yirui will lead the others, and he will sit on the roof of the truck and help. And so, without any panic, whoever stops or chickens out will get a direct shot in the head. Do you understand? Yirui said that of course she understood. Liu Zayomo took the cigarette out of his mouth and said that this is a battle for survival. They must do their best. Did everyone understand him? Liu Zayomo turned around and said that their goal was in the tiger village. Go ahead. On the road to the village, there were hundreds of mutated zombies, cars roaring forward. In the shockproof truck, the girl shouted that they would deal with the zombies. Liu Zayomo sat on top of the car and thought that they were almost there. He commanded Kin Chuen to speed up and she stepped on the gas. Liu Zayomo said, let the zombies come. Let's check which is stronger, their body or his knife. The zombies looked very ferocious. The truck hit them one after another. Kin Shuen told them to go to hell. Wu Nan said that this was a great sight. All the girls were delighted. Yirui ordered them not to wait, but to start killing zombies. She leaned out of the window and fired a pistol. The girls shot the monsters with their weapons. With so many zombies here, they don't even need to aim. They just need to shoot. Zombie mutants appeared on the road. Kin Shuen exclaimed that they were approaching them. The guy ordered to go ahead, he will deal with them. The guy rushed forward and cut one zombie after another with his ability. Yirui asked what he was doing. Is he going to fight three mutant zombies himself? Is he serious? Isn't this suicide? Quickly tell him to stop. Liu Zayomo attacked the mutant zombie. He thought it was time to start and awaken the air ability. He swung his knife and spoke air blade. And he cut the zombies one by one. They were all defeated. The girls could not believe their eyes. Did the master really kill three mutant zombies in one fell swoop? His awakened ability is too strong. Now she is sure that following her master is the best decision they have ever made. At this time, Liu Zayomo was cutting down the mutants one by one. He shouted for the girls to speed up. While driving the car, King Shuen cursed all the zombies and turned the steering wheel. Thanks to Liu Zayomo, they managed to pass calmly. They have already covered more than half of the road. A few more minutes, and they will get out of here, when suddenly Liu Zayomo noticed a huge mutant zombie jumping from a cliff onto a truck, the car overturned. Kin Shuen lay in the overturned truck and called out his name. She asked him to hurry up faster, 
All the girls shouted that they needed to help their friend faster, but Liu Zayomo told them not to dare stop and keep the line. They continue driving and don't stop, let Fei Fei clear the way with the dragon rocket launcher, and he will save King Xuan. Yi Rui cried out, crying that everyone must obey orders, they are in extreme conditions, do everything as ordered, keep moving. If anyone disobeys Master Yi Rui, he will personally behead them. The girls understood the order, they must trust him, he will definitely save her, shoot the zombies and help the owner. She must hold on. Fei Fei appeared from the truck and said that the time had finally come, she fired her dragon cannon. A powerful projectile flew forward, she thought. What a pity that she didn't have enough strength to use it all the time, otherwise everything would have been much easier. The cars moved forward. Wu Nan told the main character to take care of himself. At this time, he was shouting at the mutant zombie, how dare he, touch his man. Liu Zayomo cut him with one blow, he shouted for the girl to hold on. He would take her away from here, she was covered in blood and asked him to run. Her legs were pinned. She touched him with her hand and said that she wished there was no post-apocalypse world, and then perhaps they could be together. Her hand fell to the floor. Liu Zayomo cried and shouted that she couldn't die. This can't be true. He took her out of the car and picked her up, saying that he would still take her away from here. So they arrived at the tiger village. Wang Ting got out of the car. The blonde girl asked where the owner and King Chuan were. Why weren't they visible? Another girl said maybe they're surrounded by zombies. But doesn't this mean that they are already dead? What should they do now? The girls were worried and crying. Suddenly Wang Ting shouted that they were not surrounded and everything would be fine. She will find him. The girl decisively rushed to the truck. Wu Nan grabbed her hand and asked her not to act recklessly. If she went, she would die. Wang Ting shouted that she had to find him and pulled out her hand. She would not be able to live further if something happened to him. Wu Nan was shocked and froze. Then the other girls told her to wait for them. They will also join her to bring back the master and King Xuan together. The owner is very strong, maybe they are still alive. Better go and check it out. Yi Rui gave the command for everyone to get into their cars and follow them. She thought that if Liu Zayomo died, then their team would also die. Then Fei Fei's voice came, she asked them to wait. Standing on the truck, she looked into the distance. She said that it seemed like someone was coming towards them. It was Liu Zayomo, he was carrying King Xuan in his arms and when he approached them, he said that he had returned. He really couldn't believe her eyes, she asked if it was the owner. Yes, it was really him. He was able to return and even saved Qin Xuan. God, if he single-handedly fought off an army of 20,000 zombies, is he even human? Wang Ting rushed to him and hugged him. She was so glad that he was okay. She thought that everything was bad with him and cried. Liu Zayomo said that he was fine, but they needed to get by without it for now. They needed to take care of something. Hirui walked up to him and asked if he was fine, but what about Kin Chuan? Liu Zayomo said that when she was attacked by a mutant zombie, she got stuck under the car. Several pieces of glass hit her, she lost a lot of blood, and she urgently needs help. One of the girls raised her hand and asked to let her take a look. Before the post-apocalypse, she was a medical college student. Her name was in King. Yirui asked to please save her. The girl replied that she would do everything possible. She looked at the victim. Then she said that her condition was critical. Pieces of glass got into her internal organs, and she probably had internal bleeding. She probably wouldn't last long. Liu Zayomo asked, maybe there is still a chance. The girl said that if there was professional surgical equipment, there might be a chance. Poor Qin Xuan, she's so young, she didn't even have a boyfriend. Someone from the crowd said that she would have died if not for Qin Xuan, this terrible world. Why do only the best die? Yirui cried and thought it would be better if she were in her place. Why didn't she stand her ground then? Liu Zayomo said seriously, internal bleeding means if the internal organs don't bleed, will she be okay? Then let them stop crying. He knows how to save her. Yirui turned to him. Will he save her? How? Liu Zayomo said that he would explain this later. Let them quickly set up the tent. They need to start now. The girls ran away. He thought that it seemed that he could only use those crystals that were captured and the killers to save the girl. They have regeneration crystals. It can help restore damaged internal organs, but there is not always enough energy. In this case, he can use his own energy to help her recover. Yirui returned and said that the tent was ready. Liu Zayomo warned them all to wait and not go inside. Someone said, he doesn't have any tools with him. How is he going to treat Qin Xuan? Another girl said that they should just trust him, their friend will definitely survive. 
Kirui sat down on the ground and said that they would wait here. She prayed that the girl would survive. Inside the tent, Liu Zayomo laid the girl on the table, took the crystal, and said that he would pray for enough energy. He placed the crystal on her chest and spoke, releasing energy, a bright light emanated from the crystal. The girl groaned in pain. The girls outside the tent asked why Qin Xuan was making such a strange sound. Where did the master put his hands? Yi Rui told them to shut up. He was definitely treating her only with a slightly rare method. Let them not come up with anything for themselves. Qin Xuan screamed for him not to stop. Liu Zayamo thought that this was not good. The energy was really insufficient. She needed more. He put his hands on it and thought that it looked like he had to convert his own energy into life energy in order to save the girl she was screaming. Wang Ting thought, who would have thought that Qin Xuan was one step ahead of her. The girls were discussing these cries, don't stop, here I am, hold on. God, she's embarrassed now. If the owner treats the wounded this way, then what threatens them all? One of the girls asked, is this true? Then she is apparently injured. Yirui was already angry. She shouted if they could all be quiet. King Chuen needs peace. They all have to do their jobs. Now, don't let them stand here. She alone is enough. She wondered what he was doing inside. Why were they making such sounds? Wang Ting approached her and told her not to invent anything. He was just treating her. That's all. Yirui thought, it's really her? There couldn't be anything else there. Then a cheerful Qin Shuan appeared from the tent and said that she felt good, and Liu Zayomo said that he was very tired. The girls thought that they spent time alone. Yes, 100%. Yi Rui asked, did they spend time alone? Qin Shuan was embarrassed and said, the owner was just treating her with a life crystal. This is not what they thought. A Wang Ting exhaled, that's how it is. Liu Zayomo was angry. What's on their minds now? They are now in a post-apocalyptic world. Quickly, the cars here are unsafe, and we need to get out of here immediately. The girls ran away. King Xuan turned to Liu Zayomo and said that he saved her out of embarrassment. He replied that he saved her because she was his teammate. Let her go and get into the car. He waved his hand. The girl looked down and thought, is she really just a teammate? In a village around two rivers, the girl said that there was amazing views and air. There shouldn't be any zombies here. They can't smell blood at all. Compared to Loy City, this place is like a paradise. How did the owner find this place? Liu Zayomo thought that he was born and raised here, and now he has returned. Yi Rui approached him asking what they should do here. He replied that they were already close to their destination and needed to rest here for now. Let her take a few people with her. Maybe there will be something useful in the village. She asked seriously, didn't they need to clear this place out first? After all, there could be zombies here. Liu Zayomo replied that he was sure, and they were not here, let her step forward. He thought that he had already killed all the inhabitants of the village, so there were no more zombies here. He goes to his grandparents' grave. Yirui said that in a post-apocalyptic world, several years have passed, the vegetables should have rotted by now. She looked at the open door of the house, and thought that some people lived here even after the post-apocalyptic world. She entered the building and touched the table, there is not much dust on it, it seems her assumptions are correct. Someone lived here not so long ago. She picked up the blue notebook and asked out loud, who lived here? Maybe there is something in this book. She reads September 1, 2022. Sunny today, Grandpa is sick and coughing badly. Grandma and Uncle Zhao went to the mountain to look for herbs. He came home to help his grandmother boil water. July 15, 2022. Light rain grandfather is no longer with grandma either. He didn't even have time to talk to her from today. He is on his own. November 11, 2032. Sunny, how he wants to kill him, Bing. He will definitely kill him. Yi Rui understood that this was a diary, but how come it was written in advance? She flipped through the pages to the last and looked at the inscription in shock. It said that it was written by Liu Zayomo a year after the post-apocalyptic world. Could this be the owner's diary? And who does he want to kill? Suddenly Liu Zayomo appeared behind her and asked what she had in her hands. The girl turned around and exclaimed why he was here and hid her hands behind her back. He grabbed her hand with the diary and asked, did she read it? The girl replied that she didn't know it was his, she had read quite a bit. Liu Zayomo gritted his teeth and asked why she read this. This is his diary who allowed her to read it, why did she read it? He grabbed her by the throat. The girl cried and apologized, she didn't know it was his. Yi Rui began to choke and begged him to let her go. Liu Zayomo woke up at some point and relaxed his grip. He apologized, saying he had gone too far. 
Yi Rui apologized to him. She said that she did not know that this was his personal thing. Liu Xiaomo asked her not to tell anyone about this and left the house. She thought that he had a difficult past. But who is this Bing? Liu Xiaomo was in the mountains and remembered Bing, his elder brother and comrades who fought alongside him. They are all already dead, but he is alive. He looked at the graves. He took out a lighter and set the diary on fire. He will definitely live. For their sake, suddenly some girl appeared behind him. He turned sharply and, drawing a knife, asked who was there. One of the girls from the squad stood in front of him and said that it was she Cheg Tong. She said she saw that he went up the mountain alone. She was a little worried, so she followed him. Liu Xiaomo said that he was fine and she could return. The girl was embarrassed and said that she was very happy, thanks to him. Chuo Tong grabbed his hand and said that she wanted to express her gratitude properly. Liu Xiaomo snatched his hand away and said indifferently that they will talk when they return. It is not safe here. The girl thought, why is the owner so unromantic? She even used perfume on purpose. Suddenly a boar appeared behind her. She fell to the ground and screamed for her owner to save her. At that same second, Liu Xiaomo grabbed a knife and killed the boar. He told the girl not to wear perfume anymore. Zombie animals all depend on their sense of smell, and the smell of perfume will only stimulate them. Cheng Tong stood up and apologized. He said that someone should carry this boar. There will be a feast tonight. The girl thought that she would not give up so easily. In the evening for dinner, they had stewed noodles with pork, fresh fish soup, spicy cabbage, and wild boar over the fire. How delicious. The owner killed a big boar on the mountain, all thanks to him. The girls crowded around the pan. The meat was so delicious. Everyone thanked Liu Zayamo. Hirui turned to him and said that boar meat can be exchanged for many goods in the city. There is no need to let them eat everything. He replied that they had experienced a lot after going through those hordes of zombies. Let them only have a little bit left. He went to bed. Cheng Tong noticed him heading towards the tent and thought that you were her chance. Liu Xiaomo was sitting on the bed surrounded by bottles, and it was clear that he was drunk. He wondered how his grandparents would feel in heaven. Zhuo Tong knocked and asked if she could come in. She said that she couldn't sleep at night, so she came to him. He exclaimed that she was just in time. He also couldn't sleep. Let him come here and let them drink a little. The girl waved her hands, saying that she didn't drink. Liu Xiaomo grabbed her hand and pulled her onto his bed. He said that he also hadn't drunk before, but she just needs to start. There's nothing complicated here. The girl said that she was very hot in his arms. He asked again, is it hot? Liu Xiaomo loomed over her and asked with a grin, then why doesn't he undress her? Two hours later, he was smoking a cigarette while sitting on his bed and thought that he could not do this. Cheng Tong hugged his back and asked, is she his girlfriend now? He stood up and replied that it was too late for her to go back and let her take the crystal. With this, she will be able to buy many things in the city. The girl said embarrassedly, what does he mean? He replied that he was very sorry, he was a little drunk, and he was not looking for a woman. Let him accept this as compensation, he can give her more if this is not enough. She grabbed the crystals and smashed it on the floor. Who is she? She doesn't need this at all, she still hasn't had any boyfriend. Liu Xiaomo apologized, he really can't get a girlfriend now. He's just carried away. These are all the crystals he has, if she wants she can give them to someone else. The girl knocked it out of his hands and said that she didn't need anything. All men are freaks. He thought that she should not blame him. Now everyone in the world is cruel, and there is no one with whom he fell in love. Jang Tong ran out into the street. She screamed, what an idiot he was. Why did he do this to her if he didn't want to be her boyfriend? She sat on the ground and cried. She doesn't want to see him anymore. She will leave. Suddenly she heard several voices not far from her and decided to go take a look. She asked who is there. And King ran out to her and asked why the girl was not sleeping in the middle of the night. Cheng Tong thought, is she the only one? But she heard several voices. And King said that she probably imagined it. It was just very dark here. She was alone, looking for a place to go to the toilet. Chuo Tong exclaimed, she couldn't really have seen another girl. It was a woman in black with long blonde hair. She's not one of the team, right? And King exclaimed and grabbed her by the shoulders, let her admit that it was her imagination, and she didn't see anything. Then a long-haired girl in black appeared behind her. She said that if Chen Tong saw it, then she would have to die. The girl only had time to turn around when her blood splashed onto the ground. The next day, Yi Rui turned to Liu Xiaomo and said that one of the girls had disappeared. He asked who was missing. She replied that it was Cheng Tong. Liu Xiaomo wondered if the reason was because of what he said to her last night. 
Was she angry? Yi Rui replied that they don't know the reason yet. But in King said that she saw Cheng Tong, she ran away with tears on her face last night. At the same time, she said that she was going to return to Loi City. Liu Zayomo asked, to Loi City. It's funny how she can be able to do this. There are a lot of zombies on the way, not to mention the distance. Yi Rui thought, she remembered that he didn't communicate much with Cheng Tong, so why is he so nervous now? He ordered her to stay here, he himself would try to bring her back by car. Yi Rui countered that it was too late, she took the car last night, and should already be hundreds of kilometers away. He hit his hand against the wall, and thought that out of anger, this is not a romantic fairy tale, but a post-apocalyptic world, how could she do such a stupid thing, fool? Yi Rui walked up to him, and asked him to calm down. Zhang Tong is quite smart, and they almost destroyed all the zombies on the way here. She should be safe. He exclaimed that he didn't care if she was safe or not. He wouldn't force anyone to stay here, so she could go wherever she wanted. Liu Zayomo ordered Yi Rui to gather everyone. They are heading to the top. Yi Rui thought that judging by this reaction, it seemed that there was something between them. At this time, the party was walking through the forest. Liu Zayomo thought that according to his memory, he would be able to see the research laboratory when he climbed this mountain. Yi Rui said that it is very foggy here. They should stay close to each other otherwise someone might get lost. Liu Zayomo looked back and said that she was right. Strangely, it wasn't so foggy last time. He ordered to be closer to each other and not separate, and let them report to him if they find anything. Wu Nan said that she felt a powerful energy in front of them, and it doesn't look like a zombie at all. She doesn't know what it is. He asked again, doesn't it look like a zombie? Yi Rui suggested going back. He refused and thought that according to his memories, only the toxic miasma was a little dangerous. There was nothing else to be afraid of. He ordered her to follow him with Wu Nan. The others will stay here. Just let them keep their eyes open. They went deep into the forest. He asked if Wu Nan still felt this energy. She used perception and said that the location seems to be becoming blurry. For some reason, she seems to be disappearing, or in fact, she is everywhere. Liu Zayomo said, it looks like their enemy is not simple this time. He looked to the side and asked if Yi Rui had found anything. But the girl was not nearby. He turned to Wu Nan so that she could determine her location, but she also disappeared. He was left alone and took out his knife. Is the enemy inside the fog? At this time, Yi Rui was calling them. She noticed a poor deer with red eyes next to her. She didn't understand what it was and went to meet him. There, Wu Nan said that her abilities were useless because of the fog. She can't find them. What should she do? A white deer appeared behind her, its eyes shining brightly. Wu Nan was surprised. Red light. Liu Zayomo tensed. There was no energetic reaction. Chu Nan and Yi Rui couldn't just disappear, which meant that the fog could hinder his ability to see, hear, and even smell. He needs to find the one who created this fog, otherwise the girls will be in danger. Whoever created this fog must have a goal. He cannot find whoever is behind it, so he must lure him out. He saw a white deer in front of him, his eyes turned red, he dropped the knife and said how beautiful, the light is so beautiful and tried to touch the animal. He opened his mouth, but Liu Zayomo grabbed him by the horns and said, who would have thought that this was a zombie the deer created this fog alone? The beast mutated, but was still physically weak, he pulled out a knife. It seems that as soon as he deals with it, the fog will disappear. He killed the deer with one blow to the neck. The fog has not completely cleared. It seems that there are still other mutated deer nearby. The girls are now still in danger. In such a situation, it is difficult to find them. But although the fog prevents him from feeling, he still feels the sound of the earth. He decided to use vibration and stabbed the ground. Hearing the sound, Liu Zayomo rushed there. Wu Nan tried to touch the deer. She uttered a magnificent red light. The fog cleared a little and the girl came to her senses. What just happened to her? The monster opened its mouth in front of her, but Liu Zayomo did not let it bite Wu Nan and killed him with a knife. He asked if the girl was okay. She replied that she was fine. It seemed like the fog was created for hunting. We need to find Yi Rui as soon as possible. She must also be in danger. Liu Zayomo replied not to worry. She has the stone skin skill and the deer will not be able to do anything to her. Then Yi Rui appeared with a deer on her shoulder. She said that they could eat it today and did not flinch. The girl happily reported that this freak wanted to bite her, but could not bite through the thick skin skill, and then she simply beat him to death. They finally did it. It seems that Liu Zayomo's assumptions were correct. There is no more poisonous air. A city and a research center have opened up in front of them. 
Jirui asked, is this his destination that he spoke about earlier, the building below? Liu Zayomo replied that it was so. He thought that when someone inside the building sent him for a short time to an apocalyptic world, there must be some secrets in the building, it would be great if he could find out them. He shouted to them to call everyone here and prepare for the attack. They must get inside the building at any cost. It was already getting dark. Crowds of zombies were near the building. Fei Fei attacked them with her cannon. How will this taste to zombies? Yi Rui ordered King Xuan to take a few girls and attack the flank. The rest should focus on the zombies. They need to pave the way to the building. Liu Zayomo told them to leave those in front of him. He grabbed two knives and shouted that the monsters must all die. Chu Nan, driving the car, said that he was clearing the way for them to drive up to the building. Yi Rui shouted for him to quickly enter the building and let the others deal with the zombies outside. Liu Zayomo shouted that they would come out as soon as he did everything. Let the others be careful, they can hide in the building if necessary. They saw a huge crystal inside. Fei Fei said that she would make a fortune if she sold it at auction. There is nothing here, is this really all they got from going through this? He asked the girls to look around while he checked the crystal. It seemed to him that something connected them. Liu Zayomo touched the crystal with his hand and instantly disappeared. The girls were worried where he had gone. Liu Zayomo found himself inside the system. Is he really inside the crystal? Some girl turned to him, saying, Finally he is here. She was waiting for him. He turned around and asked who she was. The girl replied that everything is fine. Don't let him worry. As for who she is, in people's works of art they call her Gaia, but she prefers to be called the Will of the Earth. She is the embodiment, and it was she who sent him on a quest to the post-apocalyptic world for a short time. He asked why him, and what was her purpose. The girl replied that the earth was falling into decay day by day because of zombies. Her goal is to destroy them all so that balance is restored on earth. She sent many people besides him, but he is the only one who is still alive. Therefore, she needs him to travel back in time before the post-apocalyptic world began. His mission is to stop the spread of the zombie virus but he will not be able to come back no matter what happens. Liu Zayomo asked again if he doesn't return, then what will happen to his team? The girl replied that she could protect them for a while. If he could stop the spread of the virus, the story would be changed. The post-apocalypse will not exist, so they will be fine, but if he fails, her powers will disappear little by little. Liu Zayomo gritted his teeth. The will of the earth said that everything depends on him, he makes the decision himself, and she will not force him if he touches this light, he will be sent to that time and space. Does he want to change everything and end it all? Or does he still just want to live out his life here with the zombies? Let him think well. A blue sphere appeared in front of him, Liu Zayomo smiled and said that he had made a decision, he wanted to change everything. The young man touched the sphere and thought, he will fulfill his promise, and they will all be able to live in the present and forget the existence of the post-apocalyptic world. The will of the earth wished him good luck. This is her last strength. And here is the world before the post-apocalypse. Wang Ting stood in the supermarket and thought, did this guy just run away? He saved her, and she doesn't even know his name. Liu Zayomo appeared from the door and said that his name was Liu Zayomo. The girl smiled, so he came back. Where did he just go? He smiled and told her to forget about it. It's time to leave here. He took her hand. Wang Ting asked where they should go. He pulled her along and replied that it was time to save the world.